Because of the ongoing pandemic, Sussex County Board of County Commissioner meetings will be conducted remotely via Zoom. The public may participate online or by telephone. For the meeting agenda, visit the Sussex County website at www.sussex.nj.us and click Commissioners under Events. To participate in the meeting, click Online Info. Via phone, dial 1646-558-8656, enter meeting ID 526-121-1125 and the passcode 07860, which is posted in Online Info. This is the meeting of April 28th, 2021. It is 6.06 p.m. Regular business via Zoom. I'm going to call the meeting to order and please call the roll, Terry. Commissioner Carney. Here. Director Fantasia. Here. Commissioner Fasano. Here. Commissioner Patillo. Commissioner Patillo, you need to unmute yourself. Press star six. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. You're here, okay. Commissioner I'm Patillo. Here. Yes. And who will be at, who is absent this evening is Commissioner Yardley. Thank you. I'm going to ask everyone to please join me in a moment of silence and salute to the flag. Uh, today, I would like to remember in our moment of silence, a uh, Workers Memorial Day. This is actually the 50th anniversary um, on April 28th. Labor movement does observe Workers Memorial Day to remember workers killed or injured on the job, and help renew the fight for strong safety and health protections for our workers. So please join me in a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, America and to the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation, one nation about under God, with liberty, and justice, with liberty and justice, and justice for all. For all. Number four, public statement. Pursuant to the Open Public Meeting Act, Chapter 231, PL 1975, adequate notice as defined by Section 3D of Chapter 231, PL 1975, has been made by regular mail and email, such notice being submitted on January 10th, 2021, from the Administrative Center of the County of Suffolk, located at 1 Spring Street, Newton, New Jersey, to the following, New Jersey Herald, Star-Ledger, WSUS Radio, WNNJ Radio, and is also posted on the bulletin board maintained in the Administrative Center for Public Announcements and has been submitted to the Sussex County Clerk in compliance with said act. Uh, before I go to number five, I'm gonna ask um, the call moderators, please, there is some feedback and I don't, I'm not sure who's not muted, but can you please keep an eye out for that? And as we hear feedback, please mute wherever you see that sound coming from. So number five, approval of the agenda. Um, I need a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. And a second. Second, Anthony. Now discussion, uh, there are a couple uh, amendments that I would like to propose to the agenda. There are two resolutions. Uh, the first, a resolution declaring expired hazmat equipment through Veriden protective gear belonging to the County of Sussex Department of Health and Human Services as surplus. And a second is authorization to declare a 2017 Ford F-250 belonging to the County of Sussex as a surplus and permitting trade in value to be used to acquire two used vehicles. Uh, they came to us, uh, that second one came to us um, again with a strict deadline passed when we had our agenda set. So uh, it was necessary to send this out to all of you to make the April deadline as this came to us. So I'm asking for consideration that those two resolutions be added to the agenda because they are very time specific for the month of April. Also, uh, I would then suggest that they are added as resolution F, 
the hazmat equipment and resolution G, the Ford 250 uh, for the surplus and trade-in. Now also, uh, when we get to resolution 14E for the ballot question, uh, I had sent out to all commissioners um, a updated copy of this that has additional language that I'm going to review and read into the public record. It's a minor change when we get to that item. So when we get to that, I'm gonna be pulling that item separately and we'll consider that separately than, uh, than the rest of the resolution items. So I'm asking uh, now for a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Still moves, Commissioner Carney. And a second. And second, Anthony. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Pass. Also, please note we have alternate counsel this evening. Um, Mr. Kelly was not able to be with us uh, again this evening. So we have uh, Mr. Steinhardt in his place. Number six, proclamations, certifications, and presentations. We have two proclamations tonight. We have Eagle Scout Court of Honors for Scouts BSA Troop 1150 Patriots Path Council, Bridget Brady, Brianna Conlin, and Jasmine Lutz. And we also have Eagle Scout Court of Honor for Aaron Mood with Boy Scout Troop 88 from Hopat Kong, New Jersey, Patriots Path Council. Now, uh, I believe Deborah Reed Miller may be on. And I'm also asking if um, Bridget, Brianna, or Jasmine are present with us this evening. In I'm order to. Debbie Reed Miller. Hi, thank you. Um, and then we also have Aaron Mood. Uh, is he here this evening? I am. Thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna ask uh, Commissioner Fasano to please read the proclamations. Sure, Don. Uh, and we'll start here with Bridget's proclamation. This is an Eagle Scout Award proclamation and it reads, whereas Bridget Brady, a member of Boy Scouts of America, Patriots Path Council Troop 1150, chartered by Sparta United Methodist Church in Sparta, New Jersey, has earned scouting's highest rank. And whereas Bridget is a resident of Byron Township and a sophomore at Pope John Regional High School in Sparta, New Jersey. She is a member of the Robotics Club, Women's Soccer Team, and Winter and Spring Track Team. And whereas Bridget's Eagle Scout project involved creating 23 activity boxes for each of the Spark group homes. Each box was tailored to meet the specific needs and likes of the residents in that specific group home. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the members of the Sussex County Board of County Commissioners trust the, uh, the Scout Oath and Law will continue to reinforce Bridget's ideals and contribute to her exemplary code of conduct as an adult. And be it further resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex wishes Bridget Brady continued good scouting and success in life. By the order of the Board of County Commissioners, Don Fantasia, Commissioner Director, Anthony Fasano, Deputy Commissioner Director, Sylvia Petillo, Herbert Yardley, and Chris Carney as Commissioners. Don, would you like me to move right along here to Brianna? Yes. Sure. Our next Eagle Scout Award proclamation, this is for Brianna Conlin. Whereas Brianna Conlin, a member of Boy Scouts of America Patriots Path Council Troop 1150, chartered by Sparta United Methodist Church in Sparta, New Jersey, has earned scouting's highest rank. And whereas Brianna is a resident of Sparta Township and a senior at Sparta High School in Sparta, New Jersey. She is a member of the National Honor Society, Spanish Honor Society, Drama Club, and Film Club. She plans to attend college next year to study developmental psychology. And whereas Brianna's Eagle Scout project involved building and installing two lending libraries with nature and wildlife books for the Walk Hill Wildlife Refuge. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the members of the Sussex County Board of County Commissioners trust that the Scout Oath and Law will continue to reinforce Brianna's ideals and contribute to her exemplary code of conduct as an adult. 
and be it further resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex wishes Brianna Conlin continued good success, continued good scouting and success in life. By the order of the Board of County Commissioners, Don Fantasia, Commissioner Director, Anthony Fasano, Deputy Commissioner Director, Sylvia Patillo, Herb Yardley, and Chris Carney as commissioners. And our next Eagle Scout proclamation is for Jasmine Lutz. Whereas Jasmine Lutz, a member of Boy Scouts of America Patriots Path Council Troop 1150, chartered by Sparta United Methodist Church in Sparta, New Jersey, has earned scouting's highest rank. And whereas Jasmine is a resident of Byram Township and a sophomore at Sussex County Technical School in Sparta, New Jersey, with a concentration in culinary arts programming. She is a member of the swim team and plans to study culinary arts in college. And whereas Jasmine's Eagle Scout project involved building and installing two park benches at the Lake Lackawanna Beach and planted flowers and shade trees. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the members of the Sussex County Board of County Commissioners trust that the Scout Oath and Law will continue to reinforce Jasmine's ideals and contribute to her exemplary code of conduct as an adult and be a further resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex wishes Jasmine Lutz continued good scouting and success in life. By the order of the County Commissioners, John Fantasia, Commissioner Director, Anthony Fasano, Deputy Commissioner Director, Sylvia Patillo, Herb Yardley, and Chris Carney as Commissioners. Thank you. At this time, um, I would like to ask Deborah if she would like uh, to speak I'd just like to thank them all um, for allowing the girls to receive the proclamations. Um, we have four more coming your way. Um, these girls were part of the inaugural class of female Eagle Scouts uh, across the country. Uh, there were approximately 900 female Eagle Scouts uh, this year. Uh, and we're just very, very proud of all that they've accomplished in the the short two years that they've been involved in Scouts BSA. So thank you for honoring them tonight and congratulations to you, Aaron, as well. Thank you so much. Um, and it's, it's an amazing achievement and it's very exciting that they were part of the, the very first females uh, to be able to, to join that inaugural class. I look very forward to joining your event on the 8th and actually uh, meeting these young ladies in person. And we look forward to hosting you that day as well. Thank you. Uh, next, I'm going to ask Commissioner Fasano to please read Aaron Moods for Boy Scout Troop 88. Sure, this is an Eagle Scout Award proclamation and it reads, whereas Aaron Mood, a member of Troop 88 in Hopacon, New Jersey, Patriots Path Council, Boy Scouts of America, has earned scouting's highest rank. And whereas Aaron is a senior at Sussex County Technical School in Sparta, New Jersey, and he will accept a full scholarship to Fairleigh Dickinson's Honors College at their Madison, New Jersey campus. He is also an active member of the Opacon Hawks Soccer Club. And whereas Aaron's Eagle Scout project involved refurbishing the fence and leveling out the surface under the portable bathroom on site at Squire Field in Hopacon. This included repainting broken boards and repainting the fence. Thanks to Aaron's efforts, the sports field is a more safe and enjoyable environment for Hopacon's youth. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the members of the Sussex County Board of County Commissioners trust that the Scout Oath and Law will continue to reinforce Aaron's ideals and contribute to his exemplary code of conduct as an adult. And be it further resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex wishes Aaron Mood continued good success good scouting and success in life. By the order of the County Commissioners, Don Fantasia, Commissioner Director, Anthony Fasano, Deputy Commissioner Director, Sylvia Patillo, Herb Yardley, and Chris Carney as commissioners. Thank you. And Aaron, you're here with us. Thank you for joining us and thank you for uh, your service to the community. And uh, I'd like if, if you would take a minute and just share with us what made you select that project particularly to do. Uh, the project is mainly because when I was younger, uh, I used to be within the Hopak on Hawks soccer club in town, uh, and I kind of did it throughout uh, all my years 
uh, in my childhood, just playing soccer and then later refereeing for soccer. So I felt it was right to give back to them. That's wonderful. And congratulations on your uh, scholarship and your upcoming attendance, um, you know, for your university. We're very proud of you. Uh, thank you thank very much. Thank you. And thank you for being here. All right, I need a motion to adopt these proclamations. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Pass. Number seven, resolution authorizing the reading of the 2021 Sussex County budget by title only in accordance with NJSA 40A colon 4 dash. So we move to the public hearings, 2021 Sussex County budget as approved. I need a motion to open public hearing for the 2021 Sussex County budget as approved. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the public hearing is now open. If anyone is present to be heard regarding the 2021 county budget as approved, please state your name and your municipality. The clerk will take the roll and then she will call you in the order that you have stated your name and every speaker will have three minutes to speak uh, to address the budget. If you are using Zoom, please hit the red microphone. That will unmute you. If you are on your phone, please press star six to unmute. Excuse me, Commissioner Fantasia, this is Elke Yetter. Um, I believe we have to vote on the resolution reading by title only first. Okay, on the, on the actual agenda is not um, listed as procedure. I'm gonna ask um, Mr. Steinhardt is that a uh, yeah, error? Sorry, I was muted. And uh, yeah, do you want to do you want to um, do a motion to read by title only? So, sorry, I don't see that so on. So we here. need to go back. I don't see that on the agenda either. So we'll go back to that then uh, for number seven. Yep. So just suspend and the public hearing for now. Make that motion, and we'll move on. Okay. Let's make a motion to suspend the public hearing for a moment. So moved. Second. Somebody. In second. Okay. Yeah. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the public hearing is suspended momentarily to go back to resolution authorizing the reading of the 2021 Sussex County budget by title only in accordance with NJSA 40A colon 4 dash 8. I need a motion. So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, now we are going to go back. Let's make a motion Please. on the reopen. Uh, the okay, reopen. Motion. Yeah. okay, I need a motion to reopen the public hearing. So moved. Second. 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 And second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, again, the public hearing is now open. Please state your name and your municipality if you wish to speak on the budget. Being no one coming forward, I'll make a motion to close the hearing to the public. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I, I couldn't unmute I Ken Collins, Andover Township. Thank you, Mr. Collins. Clerk, do you have that? Yes, I heard that, thank you. Okay, would anyone else care to speak on the budget? Hearing no one else come forward, um, Terry, can you please uh, begin time for Mr. Collins? Mr. Collins, you can begin your comments. 
Uh, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity to address you about the budget. Um, it is refreshing to see the budget come in uh, where it is. Um, but as uh, many of the commissioners, uh, some of them may not be aware, I've been uh, I've been pursuing lower taxes in the county for a long time now, um, and and the pursuit has led me to the county commissioners, who uh, are the ones who raise the taxes uh, on the on the residents in the county, um, and um, the one of the major places where the budget uh, money is spent is on the county college. Um, I, I wanna address that over the last decade, um, actually the last 12 years at least that I've gone back and looked, um, there's the, the attendance has dropped from over 4,000 to uh, about 2,000 at this point, and it's constantly dropping, um, but um, the county keeps spending money and building uh, on, on new buildings and facilities at the county college for fewer and fewer students to, to utilize. Uh, and, and they're ending up with these large empty buildings that need to be powered and lit and maintained and, and uh, heated and, uh, and at a great cost to the community um, for a dwindling population at the college. Um, these numbers are constantly going down. There, there's been no upward motion in these numbers for the county college um, that I can see at all. And, and, and I think it's very responsible for the county to, to go forward um, spending money on the county college when fewer and fewer of our residents are utilizing it. Um, especially with COVID, um, it's become apparent to a lot of students that uh, you know, virtual learning is better done somewhere else than Sussex County Community College. It's more beneficial to them. One minute. Um, so they're so they're doing that. They're going elsewhere. For their virtual education and, and and the numbers at the county college, the attendance numbers continue to drop. Um, and, and I see it year after year. Money comes from the state that has to be used. And if you don't use it, you'll lose it. So, so the, the county commissioners authorize spending and, and, and construction of buildings, um, and, and that money has to, it's it's adding to the debt of all the taxpayers in the state, and it's adding to all the debt of the taxpayers here in the county. And we need less debt and less taxpayer burden, not more. So please, please, please stop the fruitless spending on Sussex County Community College. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. That concludes our speaker. Hello, uh, my name's Doreen Edwards. I'd like to add something, please. I'm sorry, the first name? Doreen Edwards from Vernon. Director, will you accept this caller? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. May I start? Yes, you can. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good evening, commissioners um, and everybody else um, on the line. Um, I'm not sure this is the right place, place to bring this up, but I figured I would get there in the beginning and ask. Um, in regards to our Sussex County voting equipment, I'm very uh, concerned. Ms. Edwards, Ms. Edwards this yes. uh, you will have an opportunity uh, to discuss that at the second open public session. This one particular session here is for uh, the budget hearing for okay. our 2021 county budget. Okay. I didn't know if anything was in the budget for this particular subject. That's why I was asking. So the oh, second. Other words, on the, the agenda, in other words. No, I yeah. think she's asking if there's budget items related to, are you asking uh, to correct vote, yeah. correct to the vote to the voting uh, the voting machines and situation in our county yes that's there what I is was money, yeah there is money in the budget itself yes allotted for um the board of elections and for the county clerk's office for those expenses yes so uh, mr steinhardt does this then fall under that category yeah she's asking for a spe about a specific budget line item absolutely right. okay so i didn't know what budget but budget line item that was um, after the election, I had called in and spoke to our um, the proper department about how the election went and, and whatnot. And I got a pretty good feedback. The lady that I spoke to was very generous with her time and information. Um, I asked her how the, the roles were 
were updated and kept in check. And she explained some of that to me, although I got a little lost at one point that I thought needed further scrutiny, if you would. Um, and then she said that you have we have the ESS machines. Now, from what I understand and going forward, it has been discovered that those machines as well can their their um, software can also be hacked and manipulated. And I am very concerned about that for every American, no matter what party you belong to. So I want to know what our county is going to do or how much money they allocated to just make sure that safety protocols are in place or if we're going to get new systems or how that's going to go forward. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there will definitely be more conversation regarding that in upcoming meeting. Uh, we've met with the clerk regularly to discuss uh, some of the information, some of the some of the purchases that will be required. So we will definitely have uh, many more conversations regarding that, and we'll share that information with the public. Okay. So presently, how much is in the budget for that specific um, line item or subject? I don't have that line item in front of me as we speak, because as you can imagine, the budget is a, a mammoth uh, document. Yeah. However, uh, there are some estimations of what we think it will cost the County of Sussex. Um, and I'm gonna share the, all of that information actually in my commissioner comments tonight. So okay. I'll, be, I'll be sharing some of that. Very good, thank you. Look forward to hearing from you about that. Thank you. Uh, seeing no one else come forward to speak on the 2021 Sussex County budget, I need a motion to close the hearing to the public. No move. Motion. Okay, second. Second. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Pass. Okay. Uh, resolution regarding the final adoption of the 2021 Sussex County budget as approved. Be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex that the budget herein before set forth is hereby adopted and shall constitute an appropriation for the purposes stated of the sums therein set forth as appropriation and authorization of the amount of $97,398,233 for the county purposes to be raised by taxation and certification to the county board of taxation of the following summary of general revenues and appropriations. I need a motion to finally adopt the 2021 county budget as approved. So moved. And a second. Second, Anthony. Discuss. I'm going to go to each uh, commissioner and see if you have any comments that you would like to share. Uh, we will start with Commissioner Carney. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Director. Uh, I don't have uh, any comments at this time. I, I think it's a, a good budget. I know you guys worked really hard on it, along with uh, Administrator Poff uh, and Elka Yetter. Um, so at, at this time, I don't have anything. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Pitlo. Yes, I would just like to say that, uh, and, and people really need to understand that, if the county had not had good conservative financial planning in the previous years, we would never have been able to present this type of a budget tonight. And I just wanna really thank so much our leadership financial team with Greg Puff and Elka Getter, who have really done a tremendous job, not just this year, but every year leading up to this year. And I just want to thank them for this budget and for all the work that the, the, um, the budget committees did on it as well, and our department heads. There's so many people to thank. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Director Fasano. Thanks, Dawn. And, and I know we've spoken about uh, this budget uh, at length at, at many previous meetings, but I do just want to pick up where Sylvia left off and again thank and acknowledge uh, the many staff members and professionals who work with us in developing this budget, which absolutely commits to fiscal responsibility. It prioritizes defeating this pandemic uh, while providing more services for our residents and investing in our future. So keeping Sussex County safe and affordable 
has to be the biggest priority. And I think this budget reflects that well. And I'm thankful for uh, all the work that went into it. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. And again, I'll echo the sentiment of my colleagues up here to thank our professionals as always for the time and the effort and the care that they put into it. Uh, thank you to the subcommittees. Again, I would like to note that you know, safety was certainly a, a huge factor that went into some of our decisions this year, whether it came to investing further in infrastructure, investing in epidemiologists at the uh, health department, um, all of our coronavirus uh, response planning has been on point as far as, um, you know, trying to determine the capacity of what we needed and services that we needed in relation to our population. Uh, I'm proud of the fact that we came in a couple of years ago, uh, Freeholder Hertzberg and myself, and we sat with the entire board and, and with uh, some of our professionals and discussed a debt reduction plan. So instead of a 50-year plan or a 30-year plan, we now have a 10-year uh, debt reduction plan. And even in the face of COVID-19, we did not waver from that. And we were able to appropriate our full payment as we have structured towards our debt. So I think um, it speaks volumes for the fact that we were committed to um, differentiate needs versus wants. We talk about that frequently and I'm proud of the work that our professionals uh, did and, and a special thank you to Elke Yetter as well. All right, so we had our uh, motion and our second, our discussion. Uh, now I need a roll call vote, please. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Director Fantasia? Yes. Commissioner Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. B, final adoption, Capital Ordinance 21-02. Capital Ordinance providing for road improvements, information technology and communications improvements, general capital improvements and acquisition of non-passenger vehicle, buses, and equipment for various county-owned facilities in for the County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, and appropriating $3,125,503 therefore to pay for the cost thereof. So I need a motion that the public hearing on this capital ordinance be open to the public. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Is anyone present to be heard regarding this capital ordinance? Any member of the public? If you would like to speak on this specific ordinance, please unmute yourself, state your name and your municipality. Hearing no one come forward, I make a motion that the public hearing on this capital ordinance be closed. So moved. Second. 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 Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, now I need a motion that this ordinance be finally adopted and authorize the clerk to advertise this ordinance as finally adopted and also post the same on the bulletin board in the lobby of the County Administrative Center. A motion, please. So moved. So, um, so moved. Second. A second. I need a roll call. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner Fantasia, I mean, Director Fantasia? Yes. Commissioner Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Pat. C, final adoption, ordinance 21-03. This is the bond ordinance providing for various 2021 capital improvements by and in the County of Sussex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $15,179,319, therefore, including grants in the amount of $7,349,000, $52 and authorizing $7,513,160 in bonds or notes of the county to finance part of the cost 
thereof. So I need a motion that a public hearing be open on the final adoption of ordinance 21-03. So moved. And a second. And second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Is anyone from the public present to be heard regarding ordinance 21-03? If so, please state your name and municipality. Hearing no one come forward, I need a motion that the public hearing on ordinance 21-03 be closed. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Pass. I need a motion that this ordinance be finally adopted and authorize the clerk to advertise this ordinance as finally adopted and also post the same on the bulletin board in the lobby of the County Administrative Center. Motion, please. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Terry, please call the roll. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Director Fantasia? Yes. Commissioner Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Pass, thank you. Now D, final adoption, ordinance 21-04. This is a bond ordinance providing for capital improvements to the Sussex County Technical School, located within the County of Sussex, state of New Jersey, appropriating $900,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $900,000 bonds or notes of the County of Sussex, state of New Jersey, for financing of such appropriation. So I need a motion that a public hearing be opened on ordinance 21-04. So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? If any member of the public is present to be heard regarding this ordinance, please state your name and your municipality. Hearing no one come forward, I need a motion that public hearing for ordinance 21-04 be closed. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please Second. signify by saying aye. 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 Closed. The public hearing is closed. Next, I need a motion that this ordinance be finally adopted and authorize the clerk to advertise this ordinance as finally adopted and also post the same on the bulletin board in the lobby of the County Administrative Center. Motion, please. So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. aye. Oh, no. Let me that take that back. This one requires a roll call vote. That's Let's correct. go back. Yes. Okay. So Thank this is you. a roll call. Um, Thank you. Terry, please call the roll. Correct. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Director Fantasia? Yes. Commissioner Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Thank you. Passed. Okay, so now we are on to number nine. This is public session from the floor. This public session is for questions or comments pertaining to agenda items only. Before we open the session, we ask callers wanting to make a comment to first state your name and municipality. The clerk will create a roster and call each in the order received. Comments are limited to three minutes or less and must pertain to agenda items. So at this time, I need a motion to open the floor for public comment on agenda item. So moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the meeting uh, is now open for public comment on agenda items only. Again, to unmute yourself for participants, 
please press the microphone if you are on Zoom or star six on your phone. You'll give your name to the clerk. Please speak slowly so she can record your name in your municipality. My name is Lauren Jean from Sparta Township. The last name is spelled G-E-E-N, like Nancy E. I'm sorry, Lauren, from, from what township? Sparta Township. Sparta, okay, thank you. Thank you. Tom Dalmas, Frankfurt Township. Uh, um, the gentleman from Frankfurt, can you repeat your name again? John Dalmas, D-A-L-M-A-S. Thank you. Christy Laven Hardison. Christy Laven Hardison. Yes, next caller. Frank Pallotta, Mawa. Frank Pallotta, Mawa. Okay. Next caller. Kenneth Collins, Andover Township. Ken Collins, Andover Township. Yes. Melissa Majewski, Newton. Uh, Melissa, you're you're very faint. So Melissa Majewski, Majewski. Yes. And that was Newton. Newton, correct. Okay. Okay, hearing no one else come Wait, forward. I'm sorry, hold on. I just unmuted myself. Michelle Van Allen, Hardiston Township. Michelle Van Allen, Hardiston Township. Thank you. And this is Alex Majewski Newton. All right, Alex, yes? Yes, that's correct. Is there any other caller that wishes to speak on the agenda items? Brianna Paternoster, Newton. Caller, can you repeat your name, please? Brianna Paternoster, Newton. Thank you. Okay, hearing no one else come forward, uh, Terry, I'm going to ask you to please begin. Yes, our first caller was Laura Green from Sparta. Thank you. Um, I think we can all agree that COVID-19 caused, in part, the disaster of the nursing homes in Sussex County. And a participant at the last meeting was upset that the Board of Commissioners had not prohibited the use of the phrase China virus. She found it, and I quote here, shocking, appalling, and deplorable. I would like to remind this participant that all of us present here have the First Amendment right to say what we know is the truth. The China virus is a virus that came from China. That is a fact. That is the truth. If calling it the China virus hurts the feelings of our Asian American neighbors, then I am sorry, but my rights don't end where your feelings begin. You will never convince me that two plus two equals five. And if you can't handle hearing the phrase China virus, then maybe you don't belong at a meeting of American adults. Thank you. Is this an agenda item? Yeah, if I can, uh, Director, let's let's be clear what, what public comment's all about. Uh, it's comments on governmental issues of concern to Sussex County residents, and this is comment specifically related to agenda items. For the purpose of of your clerk, you know, and you and you commissioners, so you can you can page to your agendas. Uh, it's, I, I would recommend that you ask members of the public who want to speak to tell you in advance, to tell you when they're speaking, which, what agenda item is they're going to be referring to, so you all can track it and take a look at yourselves and, and be prepared to, 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 to know exactly what's going on. Yeah, beyond, I'm not have done. to stop somebody before they get that far. And I'm not, I'm not done yet. Uh, and in addition, uh, it's comments are directed to you, the commissioners, not to other members of the public. Thank you. Director, would you like me to first uh, 
inquire which agenda topic for the next caller before commencing with the comments? That would be fine. Okay. Our next caller was John Dolmas from Frankfurt. Mr. Dolmas, can you please tell me what agenda topic you will be addressing this evening? Thank you. I wish to speak about agenda item 14, namely resolution E. Okay. Is that the only agenda topic for your three minutes or less? Yes, ma'am. All right, then you can start. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners. I'm calling, I'm speaking this evening on that resolution to calling for an investigation, which I asked for back in the last meeting on March the 24th. And I am pleased to see that it is on the agenda this evening because Governor Murphy and his, all his people who work with him need to be held accountable for this. I cannot urge strongly enough that we do this and I hope that everything passes. I only wish it could be on earlier than November, but I understand that this is the way it has to be. These people cannot be allowed to skate. This man is responsible for this, these deaths of all our elderly loved ones, be it by his own fruition or if he was following the lead of another governor, it doesn't matter. He is responsible and he must be held accountable. So thank you for the resolution. I hope it passes. And I thank you all and commend you all for your hard work. Thank you, Mr. Dolmas. Our next uh, caller was Christy Lavin from Hardiston. Christy, are you there? Uh, yeah, I just need to unmute. Um, I'm going to be please, um, um, I'm sorry. Um, uh, I'm going to be speaking be to uh, 14E. OK, then. Thank you. Is it only 14E in your three minutes or less? Yes, that's correct. And uh, before you do the three minutes, I just wanted to thank you for um, for now um, setting up the structure the way that you're doing it to avoid anything further. I appreciate that. Um, you can start. I could begin. OK, the last yes. ballot question you proposed um, in the past was regarding sanctuary states. Um, it was considered controversial um, and consequently impacted voter turnout. Some might say that was the intent. I in no way want the loss of my uncle's life or any other deaths at Andover to be used in that way. On the surface, this ballot question looks reasonable. Who would not want an investigation or transparency? All of us that lost a loved one in Andover, of course, want that. However, the means in which you're seeking to do it is what I object to. The last ballot question cost the taxpayers thousands of dollars because it was outside of your purview, and I believe this is as well. I don't want something as important or sensitive in matters and over to be tied to some political battle of yours with the state that ultimately will cost taxpayers money with legal fees and fines. Secondly, for anyone that has not been following what's been happening at Andover, there actually is an active investigation. The Attorney General's has been investigating Andover and is currently investigating all long-term care facilities in the state. We're just awaiting the final report. Not only that, but there's a bipartisan bill that passed that created a task force called the Task Force on Long-Term Care Quality and Safety. This task force is comprised of individuals that have actually been on the front lines, such as family members, nursing home staff, and nursing home residents, as well as other experts. In contrast, it is not comprised of politicians. The aim of this task force is to create recommendations and reforms that will benefit long-term care facilities like Andover. I trust this report of this task force and its perspective, more so than a supposed bipartisan group that would be created by this county. With all due respect to the GOP's idea of bipartisanship, calling Governor Murphy a murderer multiple times and then acting confused when he doesn't feel comfortable that your bipartisan meetings are supposedly set up to be constructive is hard to understand. I said it when this tragedy initially occurred, and I'll say it again. Until the politicians, lawmakers, and legislators truly work together and stop trying to use this horrific tragedy to their political advantage to prove how bad the other party is, there's little opportunity for real improvement. I was encouraged seeing all of the bipartisan bills in the state being passed and talking to the legislature. They're truly working together and trying to pass meaningful bills to help people. 
Something else that confused me about the ballot question is that by the time it would actually be um, considered in November, the Attorney General's report, as well as the task force's report, will likely already be released. The people of Andover don't need an investigation in November or December. They need one now, and there is an investigation now. So why are you doing this? There's no need Ms. for Lappin, it. Ms. Lappin, your time is up. Ms. Lappin, your time is up. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next okay. caller was Frank Pallotta from Mawa. Mr. Pallotta. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And, and I do want to thank the commissioners for the work that they do here and their attention and focus. Uh, I am speaking to uh, Resolution 14E as well, the deaths at the Andover facility. Um, and I think we all know with, with over 8,000 people who died, um, an investigation is not an investigation unless it's truly an independent investigation. What happened in the state of New Jersey, if New Jersey was its own country, it would have the highest COVID death rate of any country in the world. This has to happen. It has to be independent. Um, I wish it would happen now as well. I wish an independent investigation would happen um, right now. This needs to happen for a number of reasons. We need to investigate the decisions behind not just what Governor Murphy did, but what he didn't do. He doesn't pay attention to the science. I think we need to look into that. Um, I think it's imperative that we, we make sure that this thing moves forward. We also need to look at the inactions of Congressman Josh Gottheimer. As an elected official, you are elected to protect the well being of the people in your district. When he did not speak out, when in a debate and in open forums he said he would look into this, he is just as guilty as the governor. So he needs to be held accountable, both the governor and Josh Gottheimer, both for what they've done and for what they haven't done. Silence is terrible here, and silence is something that needs to be addressed. These elderly and veterans, and the reason I bring up veterans, because in my district in Paramus, uh, the veteran facility, we also had the same situation. We're looking into it as well. These are people who over the last 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years of their lives, they've raised families, they've sent them off to school. Some of them have served overseas. They've spilt their blood overseas only to come home and die at the hands of our elected officials. This needs to be investigated. This needs to be looked into and it needs to be independent. I wanna thank you all for your time and commissioners, I appreciate all that you do. Thank you. Uh, our next caller is Mr. Ken Collins from Andover Township. Uh, yes, good evening and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you. I wanted to speak to you on uh, item 14. I'm sorry. 14 I to speak, I'm sorry, I wanted to speak to you on item 14 and on the budget. Uh, okay. uh, Mr. Collins, I need clarification. Which item under 14? Uh, the Andover subacute issue. You're, you're, you want to talk about item 14E, the ballot question. I'd like to talk about what Mr. Pallotta just talked about, yes. That's 14E. Okay, you can start. All right. Um, so no investigation into what occurred at Andover subacute would be complete without an investigation into the shortcomings uh, that occurred right here at home in Sussex County in Sussex County government and, and in the overs, oversight of and over subacute by the Sussex County government. It is absolutely no surprise to anyone around here what happened at and over subacute. Everybody knew what was going on in that place and everybody turned a blind, blind eye to it. And, 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 and unless the county government is willing to turn its investigation on itself and, 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 and find out find the shortcomings here in this community, in our county, that let this tragedy occur, then the investigation is just a sham designed to skewer the governor. That's, that's really all it is. So, so unless this, this investigation is ridiculous and it shouldn't happen unless the county is really gonna focus its investigation on itself and why Sussex County government let this happen in our community because this has been going on brewing for decades in that place and everybody around here knows it. Yeah, and, and this attack on the governor is nothing but a smoke screen. So, so grow some guts and, and, and look at yourselves and look at the county government and what went wrong here at home in our community and stop trying to go after the governor politically 
because it's ridiculous and it's misplaced. And everybody in our community knows that you just want to do it for politics. So it's really disgusting and we're all disgusted by it. You need to know that. The budget, the budget, the county college budget is ridiculously bloated. And you guys use this county college to do all these bond issues so that you can you know, get people to make money. You know, God knows what that money game is all about. That you're playing with the county college, but you're pissing away all of our tax money. Okay. Like I said earlier, like I said earlier, the students aren't going there. You're driving all the students out of this county and want to go somewhere else. And they are. They're just leaving. And so the, the attendance drops semester after semester after semester. The entire, this entire century. Go back to the beginning of the century and look at the numbers and tell me I'm wrong. Please. I'm not. I'm right. Please stop spending all this money on the county college. Stop doing these bond issues. Stop building buildings that are empty that we need to pay to power. Just you're, you're, you're just throwing bad money after bad money after bad money at that county college. Please stop. Have you concluded your comment? I have. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Have um, our next caller, Melissa Majewski with New from Newton. Melissa, are you there? And what will be your topic? Calling again for Melissa Majewski. You need to unmute yourself, Melissa. And what will be your topic? I'm oh, sorry. I did. This is the first time I'm hearing you. What is the topic? 14, Resolution E. Okay. You can start. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm speaking tonight to encourage the adoption of Agenda Item 14, Resolution E, which authorizes the placement of a public question on the official ballot for the November general election. Advocating for a legislative investigation into the COVID-19 deaths in nursing, nursing homes and long-term care facilities is something that I imagine almost every citizen of this county will support. Simply, it's the right thing to do. I can only imagine the tremendous grief experienced by the families of those who lost their lives. There's nothing that can bring those loved ones back, but each family deserves justice and the truth of what really happened. This ballot question and the actions it will hopefully spark will provide solace and begin the process of closure. Thank you to the board for representing the people of Sussex County fairly with integrity and for always putting the needs of your constituents first. This ballot question is not a partisan issue as has been suggested, nor is it a political stunt. This question will serve to honor the legacy of each person who died at the mercy of the state. The legacy of those who, lo who were lost in the nursing homes and the long-term care facilities must live on. It's human nature to disagree with each other, but perhaps we should save that for another time. This resolution is an opportunity for us to come together as a community and ask for accountability and answers. It's only an opportunity for us to heal as a community. And let's not forget, when the Lord calls each one of us home, as he inevitably will, he does not see a D or an R in front of anyone's soul. As the Bible tells us in Matthew 19:19, 19, 19, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. This re resolution provides us with a way to do just that. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. I mean, Melissa, excuse me. Our next caller, Michelle Van Allen from Hardiston Township. Thank you. I am going to uh, ask, I'm going to ask something about the ballot budget, but I also want to address 14E. And um, I'm surprised to hear a, a caller from Mawa, but uh, okay. We are talking about Sussex County. We're talking about the nursing home. The resolution that you want to put in effect sounds like through what Christy Laban said that it's going to cost our county money when it won't appear on the budget if it passes until November. And the conclusion should already have been uh, done by then, which, by the way, if they're saying Attorney General Grewal is uh, um, not an impartial um, person investigating this, then I guess they're, they're playing uh, Trumpian tactics. And speaking of the, what went on in that uh, in nursing home, if you, you really want to deflect, you need to deflect right back to the person who used to be president of this country, who did not stop that virus in the beginning, called it a hoax, called it fake, told people not to wear masks, told them to drink bleach, to, to uh, shoot Lysol down their lungs. You're, you're asking for us to look at the wrong person here 
And you know, and you, this is the governor's uh, year to be elected, which by the way, Governor Murphy will be, but you're trying to point a finger at somebody to um, get votes, not to see what the real reason was. And you're certainly not looking at the person who was responsible for this chaos for 575,000 people to have died to date. And there'd be more than that if uh, President Biden wasn't elected. So I really think you need to look at the right place and stop putting up phony resolutions and you're um, you know, letting people get on and call. I have one minute left calling China virus and all of that kind of stuff. That's it's just reprehensible. As far as the budget goes, I, I believe I read in the Herald, which is uh, skeptical, at least that. Uh, $2 million was saved in the budget. Can you please tell us what was cut out of the budget to save that money? Because certainly it doesn't seem like all the money that had been spent to do what we need to keep our county running and our roads uh, safe and et cetera. What exactly was cut out of the budget to, for, for us to have uh, saved that much money? Because it is an election year for the commissioner and, uh, of course, the governor. So let's find out what exactly was cut out of that budget. And I'm sure it was something essential. So is that a question that can be answered? Well, the budget's a public document, ma'am. Uh, you're welcome. Yes, to the, I, this, I, uh, this is a, yeah, obviously for comment related to agenda items. So there's not going to be a response like that. But you're, you, as well as every other member of the public, every other resident of Sussex County is certainly more than welcome to, you know, to go through and, and, and compare item to item if they want to and see what. Yes, that, that's that. exactly right. And Dawn said it's a giant document. And um, I'd have to track down the budget from last year. So to ask that question, certainly, if you're signing this and approving it, you must know what you cut out of the budget as far as commissioners go. So what essential things were let go? Any social services? Nobody can answer that? Well, that's not the purpose of where we're at here in the, in the process, ma'am. If you have any other comments related to the agenda, you're certainly welcome to make them. Well, I've heard them answer other people's questions, so I just wanted to know if there was a question they could answer for me. So I, I guess my, my time's just about up. So please stop with the resolution. Stop deflecting. We know whose fault it was. 45. Thank you. Okay, our next, uh, excuse me, our next caller was Alex Majewski from Newton. Hi, yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm here tonight to speak on 14E. Okay, you and before start. I begin, if I could just ask the um, board and council just to um, ask that all comments are directed at the board, not Mr. Pallada or former President Trump. Regarding 14E, the one topic which has been at the forefront of discussion for quite some time are the COVID-related deaths in long-term care facilities and veterans' homes throughout the state. This really hits home because of the Andover tragedy. To our dismay, the Murphy administration has failed to act and take measures to prevent what occurred. More importantly, when tragedy hit, Murphy fell silent and refused to examine what took place under his watch. This has become known as the shot heard around the world. I'm not here tonight to rehash the past. However, I will look into the future to talk about what can be done. To do the right thing, we need leadership. An example of leadership is what this board is doing right here by putting a question on the ballot to call for an investigation into the depths. This board is doing everything they are capable of to deliver to the constituents and uphold the oath of office they took when they were sworn in. I'm happy this board is not leaving any stone unturned and has repeatedly demonstrates their commitment to this county. The reason why we're in the predicament we are are due to Phil Murphy's failed leadership. Had he provided an answer and done his job, there would be no investigation necessary. They are good and bad types of leadership and Murphy continues to de demonstrate bad leadership on a daily basis. This board is not afraid to ask the tough questions that need to be answered. One of the questions, for example, is why hasn't Phil Murphy in the state provided this board with the OPA request, which were filed quite some time ago? When it comes to tackling any issue, there must be a mindset for victory. We don't see any of that from the Murphy administration. That is something the investigation will uncover. There's a concept I learned in grad school that I apply in the corporate world called extreme ownership. Perhaps it is something that Murphy needs to read up on. When a problem arises, you act immediately and take full and total control. With this type of leadership, there are no excuses. If you fall short of something, you admit it and close the gap to ensure a mistake doesn't happen again. 
you own the problem and execute a strategy that delivers and addresses all the hurdles or pain points. This has not been done by the state. What we have to remember is that people died under Murphy's control. This is a serious issue. The lack of ownership and delayed response is abhorrent. The eyes of this county are on the Murphy administration and the next steps they will take. Sadly, all he does is deflect. The people of Sussex County deserve better. I thank you for your efforts and wholeheartedly support your diligence to get this resolution for a ballot question passed tonight. Thank you very much. All right, our next and final caller was Brianna Paternoster from Newton. Hello, my name is Brianna Paternoster. I am a CNA um, that has worked in long-term care facilities since uh, COVID oh, started. Excuse me, Brianna, what will be the topic oh, that I'm you'll sorry, be addressing? I'm sorry, ballot 14E. Yeah, the ballot resolution. Thank you. Um, Go ahead. I think I have a little bit uh, different of a perspective than a lot of the commenters here in that um, I watched a lot of people die this year. I worked in two facilities through the year. Um, because the facilities were made to take COVID positive patients, we infected um, a, a vulnerable population that had no way to fight this virus off. When you have a DNI, a do not intubate, and you have a DNR, a do not resuscitate, um, what would happen was a lot of the patients would get COVID um, and they would like any normal sick person not feel like eating and not feel like drinking. And as that happened, because they had a do not intubate and they do not, had a do not resuscitate, we were unable to provide the care that a hospital would in that they would get nutrition and hydration. Because we were extremely understaffed, because we lacked improper uh, personal uh, uh, protection equipment, uh, masks and, and so forth in the very beginning, um, because we did not have the room or the capabilities to deal with so many sick people at once, many of these people were put in a room in isolation to die by themselves alone while we were made to take care of as, as many patients that we could get food and hydration down and take better care of. Um, any parent who has had uh, a sick child knows that, you know, you try to keep that, that sick child away from the rest of the family so that the rest of the family doesn't get sick. One you minute. Don't, um, infect the family. And, and this was an extremely poor decision. We had no way to protect these people and people died needlessly, alone, terrible deaths. And it could have been prevented by uh, better administration and, and better government practices on, on, uh, with the Murphy administration and his decisions and what he did. And that's the end of my comment. Thank you. That was our last uh, caller, Director. We do have somebody in the chat room. Um, Steve Silvaggio is raising his hand um, and he sent a message to the call moderator to say he wishes to speak. Hi guys, can you hear me? Mr. Silvaggio, <laughs> yes, just for the record, can you tell me the municipality and the topic? Yep, um, Hopacom Borough and I wanna speak on 14E. Agenda item. Okay, you can start. Okay, good evening, everyone. Um, I wanted to speak on Phil Murphy's horrible handling of the COVID-19 situation throughout New Jersey, and especially the Andover Subdecute as it pertains to nursing home deaths in New Jersey. It's been over a year, 8,000 dead in New Jersey and 70 alone in the Andover Subdecute, and the Murphy administration continues to be non-transparent with the Sussex County officials. Family members still without answers and without loved ones. Unfortunately, the Sussex County Democrats don't feel the same way. The other day, me and the other Republicans, Republicans across Sussex County, we were all blown away from representatives from the Sussex County Democrats made statements to Republicans defending Phil Murphy and told Republicans to stop bringing out the nursing home deaths. One of the statements in the article, Governor Murphy never ordered nursing home patients to readmit COVID-19 patients. 
and laid out strict guidelines, which is a total lie. While the article really only talks about the Andover subsequent, Senator Phil Murphy failed all New Jersey, not just in Andover. If Phil Murphy did nothing wrong, why isn't he being transparent with the county commissioners? Why do you give all the nursing homes immunity? The county commissioners have nothing to do with the governor's failures, and I applaud them for trying to get to the bottom of it. I also take great offense to the recent statement in the, in the, by the Sussex County Dems and tap into New Jersey regarding nursing homes. New Jersey Republican leaders must end politicalization of nursing home victims and families. Maybe if the Democrats actually knew how to lead and listen to warnings from the CDC in January of last year, this never would have happened. The people of Sussex County are resilient and will never stop looking for answers for their family members. Disgraceful article. And it's not number 45's fault. I'm thankful for Donald Trump being president when this happened because the current presidents can't even form a sentence. That is it. Thank you. All right. I believe that was our last caller. Thank you. Actually, it's not. I raised I mean, my I'm, hand to speak. I'm sorry. What is your name? It's Donna Mullen. Ms. Mullen, for the uh, record, what is the municipality? Franklin. And what agenda topic will you speak of? For 14E. You can start. Okay, thank you very much. Um, just um, want to comment on the Andover subacute and the 14E. Once again, there's loads of bad mouthing Governor Murphy. Um, I shadow Michelle, Michelle Van Allen with regards to her comments on how this has been handled from day one with our highest authority, which is 45. Um, after 37 years in healthcare and 13 years of it with a, a geriatric physician who was medical director in many nursing homes in Morris County, I have to say hospitals release patients to nursing homes. Most of the nursing homes in Morris County designated certain floors for the COVID cases. Secondly, I'd just like to mention um, you know, we have to follow the money here. Andover subacute has been a problem for long before COVID-19. I have family members from years ago that were in there that the care is horrible. The owners should be held responsible for not enough equipment, not enough personnel there to take care of patients. And also I would like to mention, why did the ownership change its name after COVID? To me, that's a red flag that there's obviously a problem here. And you know what? I also need to mention that I've been hearing many ads on WSUS. One from, I don't know her full name, but Ms. Miller, who quoted the Holocaust with regards to Andover Subacute, and also ads from Frank Pilata on WSUS in Sussex County. Bad mouthing Governor Murphy. So I just want to make everyone aware out there that, you know what? You have to follow the money. You have to follow the ownership. You have to follow what's been going on in these nursing homes for years. And also, maybe Medicare needs a nice confidential uh, phone call from somebody with regards to the money funnel through there, as well as any other. One minute. Thing. So I would just like to say that I think we need to address this with some type of task force that's going to look at all kinds of issues. Not just bad mouthing Governor Murphy because he's a Democrat, and bad mouthing anybody who's a Democrat because once again, you are not representing your constituents in Sussex County. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, seeing no one else come forward, I need a motion to close the floor for public comment on agenda items. So moved. And a second. Second. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> okay, moving on to number 10, commissioner's comments. We are gonna start with Commissioner Carney. Thank you, Director. Um, first, first, um, I just wanna congratulate all our Eagle Scouts. Uh, job well done, big accomplishment, kudos to you. Um, pertaining to the NJTPA, we, I had a meeting last Monday um, they are starting round three of the complete streets program. Uh, just to let everybody know what, what that is, that's the, that the definition of a complete, complete streets is a transportation policy and design approach that requires streets to be planned, designed, operated, and maintained to be safe, convenient, and comfortable travel 
and access for users of all ages, abilities, regardless of the mode of their transportation. Uh, just to give you an example, uh, I, I, I sometimes see when they do new construction, you see um, the handicapped uh, ADA accessible ramps uh, leading to nowhere. Um, th this is for future um, sidewalks and crosswalks and stuff, but this is just, just an example to, to give you. Um, uh, bridge, Stillwater, uh, Myrtle Grove Road, CR County Route 521, Bridge S07, uh, that will commence actually tomorrow, and that should take two or three, three days um, with the delays. Uh, moving on, I was able to meet um, with another DPW garage in Lafayette, Christina Marks from the CWA accompanied me. Um, over in Lafayette there, uh, that was Roads and Bridges Department. They uh, pretty neat um, what they do over there. They actually make all their signs in house. They have about five plotters, uh, which expedites the sign making. Uh, so if one gets hit by a, a vehicle or taken down by a storm or so on and so forth, they can produce one very quickly, uh, which is nice. It's, it's, it's very good. Um, this, this, this other department, they're in charge of all the tree trimming, uh, grass cutting, so on and so forth. They, they also uh, maintain the guide rail replacement. So, um, so they do a nice job over there. They're also uh, starting a GIS program, which basically gives them immediate locations of all the county signs. So when they are hit, they immediately know uh, where they're located. So they're working on that. I also went over to social services and met with uh, Joan uh, Brucio. I hope I said her name right. Um, they do a very nice job over there. I, I got to visit their food pantry, which is uh, a, a nice, it's a very large facility. And what I didn't know is not only do they have the food pantry there, but they uh, give food for all food pantries around the county, which is pretty neat. Um, I do have to give one shout out to a very important person who takes no credit and her name came up uh, many times. She spends many hours, days there, uh, whether it be by herself or with some other people. And, and that's, uh, that's gonna go out to Rita Oraho. She, she, she has countless hours over there. So thank you to her for doing, doing what you do. Um, I'm also working uh, with some uh, uh, Sheriff Strada and Carol Navrit with some updated safety precautions uh, with social services. Um, I was also able to meet with the CWA, uh, CWA reps and Diana Derizi. We went over some new safety precautions or on our, over at the county building, uh, some new proposed protocols. Uh, we, we will be meeting uh, quarterly just to kind of have a open dialect here uh, going forward uh, with a nice working relationship. I, I think it was a it was a very good meeting. Yeah, I, I think we, we, we nipped some things in the bud that that been lingering for a while. Um, also, uh, Director Dawn Fantasia and I, along with uh, one of her colleagues and my nine-year-old son, we went to the Sky, Sussex Skylanders Military Appreciation Game um, over at the Skylands Stadium. Uh, they versed uh, Orange County Community College. It was a free event. Uh, donations were accepted for the college's Student Veterans Emergency Relief Program. And this program provides emergency funds to students, veterans at SCCC who need financial help between semesters. So we only stayed for uh, about five and a half innings. It was about nine o'clock and my son had to go to bed, but uh, the Skylanders were winning 17, uh, nothing when we did leave. And then just, I got one more thing. I just want to say um, regarding resolution 14 E, um, you know, the, the start of this issue that happened in the nursing homes predates the start of my service on this board. Uh, but of course, the tragedy at Andover Subacute last year impacted all of Sussex County. Over a year later, what we do know is the public still doesn't have answers to all the questions. Attending the vigil that and Andover Subacute family members held on April 13th, I know especially the families have no answers. Both sides of New Jersey legislature were originally on board with bipartisan deep dive to investigate what happened, including looking at the state's role since it is the state that ultimately oversees what happens in its nursing homes. President of the Senate, Steve Sweeney, a Democrat, often worked in a bipartisan manner in the past with our Senator, Steve Orho. Now Steve Sweeney and the entire Democrat legislator have since instead turned their backs entirely on affected families in an investigation to shield Governor Phil Murphy and his administration. 
very obviously turning this into a political issue to protect the government. If the Murphy administration was truly open to a complete investigation, it would be open to permitting an investigation of its own actions. Yet the Murphy administration and New Jersey Department of Health have remained fully shrouded with this, even blocking Oprah Crest sent by this county a year ago, looking for answers as to what happened in Andover sub -Q. Well, listen, this isn't about people. This, this is about people, not politics. It's COVID struck innocent individuals in Andover sub -Q and other facilities statewide who were exposed to the coronavirus. When COVID positive, they mix in with the healthy. In the end, New Jersey senior citizens and workers in long-term care facilities who said they didn't have proper PPE were jeopardized, no matter the color of their skin, their gender, their religion, or political affiliation. Right? It's time for answers for all these reasons. And I am support, I am in support of passing this resolution 100%. So thank you. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, next, we're going to go to Commissioner Patillo. Good evening. Thank you, Dawn. Um, I first want to congratulate all of our Eagle Scout winners. I am so happy that girls can now get an Eagle Scout award and not a gold uh, award. Every time I would go to one of their ceremonies and give them a gold award, it never had the recognition of becoming an Eagle. So I'm really proud of them. 900 of them. It's amazing. Um, I have a, a report tonight that's a little long, so I ask you to bear with me. Um, it's about the Alliance North report. I had mentioned in one of our previous meetings uh, that maybe we could put an alliance together like they did in Newark. Well, I had to actually go find out what that alliance was. It took quite a bit of time, but I have a very thorough report to report on, on what that actually is and, and how that happened. So at a previous commissioner's meeting, I spoke about the Newark riots and what racism and hatred can do to a city. And after the events of 1967, Newark remained in a state of unrest for years. And that is why when riots erupted across our nation this summer, or last summer, I was very concerned that the city of Newark would once again explode in vigorous protests. But that never materialized. Instead, 12,000 people marched peacefully throughout the city, and newspapers hailed Newark as the model city for peaceful protests. During my comments, I explained the importance of doing something productive in order to make an impact in our community against hatred, racism, or any other issues of concern. And as an example, if you wanted to form an alliance like the one they have in Newark, I would be happy to lead it. Later, I received a request from a resident asking me to do just that. So that is why I am giving this report tonight. So how did all of this happen? How did a whole city remove themselves from the rioting, looting, and property destruction that seemed inevitable? Well, in order to find the answer, I contacted a pastor in Newark who lives in the Central Ward where the riots took place in the 60s. And I asked him a simple question. Why did Newark remain peaceful last summer? And he responded with a simple answer. Stakeholders in Newark had made an alliance to bring people together. At that time, I really didn't have a full understanding of how the Alliance was formed or their foundational message. All I knew was that this Alliance was proven to be extremely successful. So in order to find out how Newark maintained a commitment to nonviolent protests, I met the same pastor who I spoke with last year. He mentioned that there are three factors that he believes have an influence in the city today. The first is the Alliance. The second is the involvement of an activist. And the third is the influence of the Martin Luther King Jr. movement. We discussed the city and the physical changes that have been going on since the riots. However, the Alliance pastor was speaking about was not involved in the economics of the city or new building projects. Rather, this Alliance was formed to bring North back to its spiritual heritage. Their template is adopted from the word of God and their purpose is to impact the city spiritually. The pastor explained that a strong minister alliance association was formed after the riot. And there was also a majority of people who lived in Newark who had a heart for the city and shared in the alliance's vision for peace and healing. Consequently, the churches not only minister to their own congregations, 
but they go out to the public and present street outreach and evangelism programs every summer so people can hear biblical messages and spend time interacting together as a community. The second influence in Newark is a secular group called People for Progress, and that is led by an activist. This man rose up as a teenager after the riots, and he became an activist after he attended Princeton University. He uses the churches as a platform, and church members support this secular entity. Primarily, he identifies a cause and organizes peaceful rallies, and this enables him to bring awareness and education to people about issues concerning their quality of life and the city itself. And the third influence is the Martin Luther King Jr. movement. Martin Luther King Jr. spoke in Newark and left an impression because of his spiritual association as a minister. And there was an impact then that they still have today. The pastor clearly stated that drawing a line in the sand and forcing people to choose one side or the other is not working. He went on to say, if your goal is to unify a city, you must look at the problem, listen to each other's concerns and points of view, and come to the median of the mind. It isn't achieved by rhetoric, rash judgment, hard hearts, stubborn minds, or name calling. Uncivil society with no personal responsibility and the attitude of it's the other person's fault is just fruitless. He also emphasized the fact that there are many voices out there, but the difference in the voice of the Alliance is that the churches are rooted in truth, in love, and in peace. We didn't have to add to that message, he said. The model has proven itself to be successful. Interesting enough, none of these entities were organized by politicians, and for good reason. Politicians bring politics. And politics was a very large part of the problem in 1967 and continues to be a very large part of the problem in 2021. We both agree that politics is not the solution for reform. Stakeholders are the answer. And the Minister Alliance Association is a perfect example of that. The stakeholders that are active in Newark are the churches and activists, and the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. that continue to resound in the hearts of many people even today. Through their efforts, love for the city has become a moving force, building strong, peaceful foundations between members of the community and finding success uniting a very fractured city. After many in-depth conversations with the pastor, the most important realization for me is that there are major differences between a large city and a small rural community. The issues that shape the city of Newark are not the same as the issues that shape our county. The one thing we do have in common is the most important. We both have active stakeholders that are vested in our community. As Pastor mentioned, it was the stakeholders that made an alliance and brought people together. Those stakeholders in Newark were represented as seven churches, one activist, and an inspirational movement. In our county, our stakeholders are represented as schools and college, businesses, nonprofits, churches, law enforcement, civic organizations, and most importantly, we the people. I'm going to take a moment to read a list of events that were scheduled on the green in Newton in just the last two years. Presidential Emergency Action Rally, Closed Line Project, Sexual Assault Awareness Month, Pro-Choice Rally, Recall Governor Murphy, Celebration of LGBTQ Plus Pride Month, uh, the Reading of the Declaration of Independence, Overdose Awareness, Love Wins Vigil to Promote Love and Peace Toward Fellow People, Pro-Life Rally, Community Rally, No One is Above the Law Rally, Closed Line Project, Sexual Assault and Child Assault as well, Remembering Lexington and Concord, 50th Anniversary of Earth Day, Solidarity or Support for BLM and George Floyd Memorial, Political Campaign, Uh, there was an assembly to pray publicly for unity, peace, and equality, Celebrate Juneteenth, First Responder Thank You event, a prayer rally, support USPS, 
Prayer and Worship, International Overdose Awareness Day, a Trump rally, support of local police, Friday, Domestic Violence Awareness, Awareness Month Vigil, and Dress the Fence Service Event. I could go on and on, but this list represents just one location on the green, not the rest of the county. There are so many public events around the county that bring awareness and pertinent issues and much needed reform. They manifest themselves in different ways. Informational forums, symposiums, presentations, programs, walks, rallies, and vigils. And like NORC, they all identify a cause, bring awareness, and educate the public about relevant issues. They also offer residents a chance to interact as a community, which was paramount in the success of the NORC model. Our churches may not be in close vicinity to each other as in the city, nor do they have a formal countywide alliance. However, that doesn't stop them from having a presence in our communities and joining together with other denominations to promote a peaceful and unified environment. And as an example, during the Lenten season, Father Robert Greiner from Newton's Episcopal Church partnered with Mount Calvary Baptist Church, a predominantly black congregation, to present Crossing the Great Divide, which was a five-week series featuring topics about racial discrimination. When the series was over, Father Greiner said, and I quote, It's sort of a testimony to Christ that when everything is about division, we're coming together. To me, it's a lovely witness of hope and it's here. It is not abstract. It is not in Washington, D.C. It's here that we can be with each other in our struggles. You see, there are many churches in our county that are talking to their communities about current issues already. And like the Nork Alliance, they have a very insightful perspective. They believe that love will transform lives and love will overcome racism and division. And just like Nork, they have the same template, which is adopted from the word of God, and their purpose is to impact the county spiritually. That is a model that transcends diversities and has been proven to be successful. And that model already exists right here in Sussex County. Politics is not the solution for reform. Stakeholders are the answer. We the people are the stakeholders. The power for change lies within each one of us. It is always about choices. When our hearts are set on peace, then unity follows. But when our hearts are set on making people choose sides with one another, then there will never be any peace. And everyone shares in that responsibility. Racial discord can only be defeated when peace and love reign in your own heart. I have to say that I enjoyed going back to Newark and driving through the old neighborhoods and seeing the changes that were driven by adversity, healing, and now transformation. It was a long road back to the city. It took many, many years. But I also have to say that my trip made me realize how fortunate I am to live in such a wonderful place as Sussex County. Now, I spent a lot of time on this. Uh, I want to say that pastor is a black pastor. Um, from a black church, predominantly black church in Newark, a very large church, Uh, wonderful man, full of wisdom. I I actually went down to speak with him once uh, because I was on the phone with him. It was easier to go in person. We spent hours, absolute hours together, talking in depth about racism, racism in the past, the effects of it now in the future and and where we're going with this and and what needs to be done. Um, The churches in Newark, the seven churches. Now, there are probably hundreds of churches in Newark, but seven of them came together for an alliance, and they worked together for not just public outreach in their own communities, but even farther out. Oftentimes, pastor will take a van and just stop on a corner and start to preach for whoever's standing in the van, just to give people the opportunity to hear truth and understand that we all need to be a part of this peaceful uh, effect that we want. We can't just say, well, well, you're angry, or I don't like what you have to say, or start pointing fingers. It's about us. It's about each one of us. And I think one of the most important things that he told me, and I read this right in the beginning of the report, is that there were a majority of people in Newark after the riots that wanted that alliance and the vision that they were speaking about. 
And I think when you have a majority of people anywhere that want peace, unity follows. So when I look at what they did, we're doing that here, and we've been doing it for years. These different groups and different uh, uh, advocates and activists that we have, those that are working within a system, those that are trying to work outside a system, they are both needed. They're very important to have in your community. But I also understand that people want a forum to talk. When you have a controversial issue, they want to speak about it. And I have always found that the best way to do that is to have a facilitator so that everything stays on track, uh, so that they can add to the conversation. There might be new perspectives that people can, can hear and begin to, to think about. Uh, usually there are professionals or people that have experience in these types of things that make great facilitators. And right now there are two events being planned in Sussex County that are going to do just that. I also hear the rattling of others. And if I find out that anything else is planned, I will bring it and, and speak to you on it. The first one is on June 12th. And uh, Lee Rasson, if you don't know Lee, he's a former New York Giants running back, uh, two-time Super Bowl winner. He will be speaking in Sussex County on June 12th from two to three, I'm sure it'll last a lot longer than that. And he's going to be at the old Sears parking lot. He's gonna be right out in the parking lot. You can bring your chairs. He's going to talk to the audience on racism and racism in his life. And he is going to have a question and an answer period. And he wants a lot of question and answering going on. So he's coming out, excellent speaker. I hope he can put that time aside and, and come and listen to him. And then in September, this is in the planning stages right now, Sussex County College will be presenting an academic conference on tolerance, tolerance and hate in speech and action, both open to the public. There will be another opportunity for the people to ask the panel questions and have their questions answered. Um, I'm going to just read a little something that describes that conference. Hate crimes does not always involve hate speech, and hate speech in and of itself is not always a hate crime. This discussion featuring the diverse perspectives of legal professionals, journalists, historians, and civic leaders will address issues such as the difference between hate crimes and hate speech, responses to hate speech, the First Amendment and free speech, and how to avoid criminalizing thoughts or protected speech even when that speech is offensive and hateful. There's a lot there, and you're gonna have professionals there that can uh, give you great insight to all these different issues, and then you have the opportunity to interact with them and have your questions answered. I think these are two great forums for the community, and I hope uh, that as time goes on, more uh, people decide, more uh, stakeholders decide to come out and to offer more forums and opportunities for the community to speak. Uh, so I want to thank you. That's that's all I have. Thank you. Uh, next, we will go to Deputy Director Fasano. Thank you, Director Fantasia, and thank you to all who are joining us here tonight. Uh, I, I too first want to congratulate uh, our Eagle Scouts that we had at the beginning of the meeting. That's quite an accomplishment. Uh, congratulations uh, to them. I just have a few things tonight from my end, and of course we did. Uh, finally adopt the 2021 budget, uh, that that has been a big focus as well. From a COVID standpoint, I'm encouraged by the county's latest reports, which currently shows a fluid decline, uh, and, and I'm going to preface the word fluid, in daily new cases. However, I am just as encouraged with our vaccination numbers, including the tremendous work our team at the Sussex County Fairgrounds is doing. According to the state, over 63,000 residents in Sussex County have been administered at least one dose of the vaccine with over 43,000 residents fully vaccinated. Those are encouraging numbers that continue to get more encouraging uh, as the days go by. And of course, Sussex County continues to offer free at home and in-person testing options for our residents as well. And all of that information, including how to make an appointment at our vaccination center at the fairgrounds can be found right on our website, which is simply sussex.nj.us slash COVID-19. I'm also happy to report that after we had Hunter Space join us at our last meeting to talk about the amazing work he and his group are doing with their Alabama project and gathering old firefighting equipment to donate 
uh, to a hard hit area of Alabama uh, due to some recent tornadoes there. Um, Sussex County will be contributing equipment of our own. Sets of gear that are no longer able to be used by the County Hazmat Team has been added to our agenda tonight to declare it as surplus items and to donate it to the Shinbone County Fire Department in Delta, Alabama, in which Hunter will coordinate. I'm very proud of Hunter's work and all the work that they're doing over there. Uh, and I'm also glad to see Sussex County can help out uh, in a small way to this very large and extraordinary effort. And finally, I also wanted to congratulate Sussex County Community College's football program for their first win in school history a little bit more than a week ago. And it's probably the best way that you can get a first win with a 48 to eight win over Cap Academy <laughs> last week. Uh, congratulations, well-deserved. Here's to many more. Uh, there's not a lot of football on in April, uh, as some of you may know, so I had the chance to uh, watch some of that game over the live stream, and it was great to see, and it was great to see those students uh, have opportunities that weren't available to them before, so great job to them. Uh, I was going to keep my comments regarding item 14E uh, to when we got there, but uh, I think it might be appropriate uh, just to go there now. More than 8,000 residents of long-term care facilities in New Jersey have died from COVID-19, resulting in New Jersey's long-term care facilities having the highest rate of death in the nation. And Sussex County is no exception to that, as it has been tremendously impacted as well, including one of the worst tragedies in modern county history at Andover Subacute. Attempts to obtain information regarding this situation has been repeatedly blocked by Governor Murphy's administration. And it is absolutely wrong. It should never ever be too much to ask for public information and understand what our government is doing, especially in this situation where people have lost their lives, potentially due to the policy decisions made by the governor and his agents at a time when New Jersey was, and still is for that matter, being ruled by executive order. This situation can never ever happen again. And getting answers as to what happened is a good place to start to ensure that. Sussex County and many, many others have asked for transparency from the governor's office on this issue, and it has been flatly denied. We should not accept that. It is too important to accept that. Current and former residents of these facilities and their families and employees, both in Sussex County and throughout the entire state, deserve answers. This public question would direct the commissioner board to consider every legal action necessary to compel the governor and the state legislature to release all public information requested by Sussex County on behalf of and by its citizens, and to conduct a fully transparent, independent, public, bipartisan legislative investigation into the policy decisions and the state oversight of New Jersey's long-term care facilities. I'm confident that the people of Sussex County and many more in the state of New Jersey feel the same in saying that this isn't simply about wanting to know what happened at New Jersey's long-term care facilities. This is about deserving to know what happened and ensuring it never happens again. We've asked for information and we've been denied. And I think it is now appropriate to ask our residents if they would like us to proceed. In fact, I think it's beyond time. So thank you, Dawn, and that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. I'm gonna start my report tonight with the health department update. So the County of Sussex has appointments available this week for first dose COVID-19 vaccinations. If you visit our website, sussex.nj.us, you can click on the Get Vaccinated tab to schedule an appointment. So again, you must live, work, or go to school in Sussex County uh, to utilize that. So Sussex County is also coordinating with Atlantic Health System and Gail Carrick, County Superintendent of Schools, to vaccinate high school students aged 16 and older. And as you recall, we were originally uh, just strictly giving the Moderna vaccine, which is not approved for those under the age of 18. Um, Pfizer is. So that's a new program that's coordinated for 16-year-olds. So not, I don't want to... Uh, duplicate uh, what Anthony had shared regarding uh, the vaccines that we have received. So um, he shared that already, but I do wanna again note that seniors who do not have access to the internet. So if you happen to be participating on this call right now and you know someone that does not have access 
internet connectivity. Then call Sussex County Senior Services at 973-579-0555 to receive assistance in registering for an appointment. And also for transportation, uh, seniors can contact Skylands Ride 973-579-0480 for assistance. So again, New Jersey, the Department of Health has resumed the administration of the Janssen or Johnson and Johnson vaccine for persons aged 18 and older. And there's a update uh, to the emergency use authorization form. So if you're interested in that vaccine, please, please research that. If you have any questions at all for COVID-19 or vaccines, you can call our COVID hotline from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., 973-579. 9488, and that's staffed Monday through Friday. So to give you just a little perspective as to where we are with COVID here in Sussex County, the week ending April 17th, 2021 is the most up-to-date data that we have released in, um, in aggregate here. We are still at a high level, as is most of the state. States broken down into six regions, and five of six regions are still code orange, which is considered high according to the weekly matrix. The only region of the state right now that is listed as moderate in yellow is central western New Jersey right now currently. So again, the New Jersey Department of Health changed the travel quarantine recommendations. So no quarantine is recommended after travel for those individuals considered fully vaccinated. So that's two weeks after your second dose of the two shot series or two weeks after your single dose of Johnson and Johnson. And you're considered fully vaccinated or if you've recovered from COVID-19 within the past 90 days from the date of your illness onset and you are considered covered during that period of time. Lama Shaddad, who is our epidemiologist, reported a decrease in the total number of cases in Sussex County. However, there is an increase in the number of cases among school aged children. So the increase in the number of school related outbreaks uh, that was reported, and I do have that data as of April 26th, and there's 10 confirmed active outbreaks in Sussex County schools. Now keep in mind, uh, children 15 and under cannot be uh, vaccinated. As of April 23rd, there's five confirmed active outbreaks among our 19 long-term care facilities. It's a low number of cases. It's mostly among staff. This is a very high percentage of vaccinated staff and, and residents. And we continue to monitor reports regarding all of the variant strains that you'll read about. Uh, Sussex County's very first infection resulting from variant strain B117, the UK strain, was reported during the week of March 8th. Health Division continues to investigate all the positive cases and continue to contact trace. So right now in Sussex County, as of April 26th, the total number of residents that have tested positive is 13,944, so that's a 10% positivity rate. We have 12,730 residents have recovered, so 91% of residents who have contracted COVID have recovered, and that means that they did not pass nor are hospitalized currently due to COVID. There's 919 cases under investigation, which means our contact tracers are still out making contact, following up, or individuals with active uh, infections that are still in that infection window. That's about 6.6% that are still under investigation. Our total deaths, 295. That's a 2% fatality rate. I can't stress enough that that number is uh, drastically improved from a year ago, because a year ago at this time, our death rate was at 14% due to the uh, infection rates in our long-term care facilities. Uh, long-term care facilities, residents and staff that have tested positive since the inception is 773 in total. So 5.5% of Sussex County's positive cases were in long-term care facilities. Deaths uh, for those facilities stand at 134. So 45.4% of our deaths here in Sussex County occurred uh, in long-term care facilities or in relation to. Uh, as far as hospitalizations go, I do have the numbers from Newton Medical Center. Currently, um, for the month of April, they report 75 COVID-related hospitalizations this month. Um, our high, just to contrast, was January of 2021. We had 122 COVID-related hospitalizations at Newton Medical Center, and we pulled those statistics on uh, the state CDRSS uh, system. 
couple other things that the Department of Health is offering. There are a few health, um, health check clinics. We have one on Tuesday, May 11th, 2021. It's from two to four. The Office of Public Health Nursing at Wheatsworth Road in Hardiston Township. And that clinic offers vaccines for adults and school-aged children. And appointments are required. And this is not COVID. This is uh, general vaccines. You can please call 973-579-0570, extension 1211. All of this information, by the way, I know I speak it here, um, but obviously available on our website. And you can uh, inquire about which vaccinations are offered uh, at that at that clinic. There's also a child health clinic on May 18th from 9.30 to 12.30. And for that one, there's gonna be complete physical exams, screenings, uh, age appropriate immunizations for children aged zero to five that do not have health insurance. So again, this is a specific clinic for children who do not have health insurance and appointments are required. And again, you can call public health nursing and please visit our website to follow up with that. And then there's also a third screening, a comprehensive metabolic profile on Saturday, May 22nd from 8.30 to 10.30. And that provides basic screening blood work for adults aged 18 and over. And again, appointments are required for that. So please visit the website or uh, give a call. Now I want to update you. Commissioner Yardley is uh, not at our meeting this evening, but I wanna give you the update regarding the issue with New Jersey Association of Counties in support for reimbursing county costs for unfunded early voting mandates. So Sussex County, we were among the majority of New Jersey's 21 counties that voted in the affirmative at a recent emergency meeting of the New Jersey Association of Counties to ask the New Jersey Council on Local Mandates to intervene if the state again underfunds our costs that we are expected to bear for in-person early voting. Now, if you recall in 2019, we faced this issue. Um, the state did not agree to pay the counties and NJAC filed uh, paperwork with the Council on Local uh, Mandates and actually in court, we were successful and the state was forced to reimburse us for the costs incurred. Though again, it seems that we're moving in that direction yet again for this. So, you know, the, the burden of the cost of this legislation is going to fall upon Sussex County. And since it's mandated from the state, the state should adequately fund it. Um, the governor's budget currently includes $20 million for in-person early voting expenses, but preliminary estimates NJAC received from all of the counties, every county was expected to submit what their costs were. That price tag was $77 million. And that included every county's purchase of new voting machines, software, e-poll books, and ballot printing systems. And this kind of addresses uh, this first speaker's question. I believe Doreen, uh, Doreen Edwards, had come and asked uh, a bit about this. So according to our Sussex County estimates that we actually submitted directly to NJAC, in order for us to be able to support the in-person early voting mandates beginning for the November 2021 election, we have 116,562 eligible voters in the county. So we're going to need for early voting, three voting centers. Uh, they're saying for the course of the entire um, voting process, the week, whether it's eight days or how many days that they set, we'll need a total across the entire county of 400 poll workers. The county would need to purchase 100 voting machines at $9,100 each. 200 electronic poll books, and they cost $2,252 each, five ballot printers at $10,655 per printer, and the new software is $57,850. So, you know, also we're just thinking about um, the actual costs of materials, but it's going to also make us have to pay in perpetuity because obviously there's long-term operational expenses for poll workers, for training new workers, overtime costs at voting centers, um, storage maintenance, security of the voting equipment. Um, so again, NJAC is not opposed to conducting in-person early voting. Sussex County, Sussex County government is not opposed to holding early in-person election. 
the fact that we would be expected to shoulder these costs that are ordered from the state, we believe fully falls under the New Jersey Council on Local Mandates who would provide us dispute resolution. And I believe that this falls squarely under that. And uh, again, these, these dates are approaching quickly. And I think this is another prime example of legislation being passed and then asking how do we possibly do this or fund this afterwards. We've seen this multiple times coming out of Trenton. So this is nothing new, but hopefully we will get relief and all counties will get relief. We have municipalities also reaching out to us currently uh, because there is the trickle down effect where they will have overtime as well for their local uh, municipal um, municipal locations as well. So we've received multiple communications from municipalities asking how they are to fund to fund these increased costs. So we're hopeful. Um, I did receive information um, from JCPNL that I wanted to share. Uh, they've donated about $3.4 million across uh, its service territory to probably about 100 organizations. And in March, uh, First Energy conducted something called Harvest for Hunger Campaign and their line shops and employees collected donations for local food bank banks, including Norvis Gap and the food pantry at Project Self-Sufficiency. Uh, the Skark Foundation, they awarded them a $5,000 grant to support their Harvest Home Food Program. And they also worked uh, for Earth Day and Arbor Day. Their employees planted thousands of trees to celebrate uh, those events, just so you are aware. They are also going to be uh, planting at Patchwork Pastures in Wantage next month, just so you're aware. Um, I had the opportunity to speak last week to about a dozen members of the Branchville Rotary via Zoom. They invited me for a department, a health department update, and I shared with them our COVID response and I broke down some of the budget. Uh, they had questions about uh, budget. So I shared some of that information with them. It was nice to meet with that group. Um, also, as uh, Commissioner Carney had stated, uh, the military veterans game was it was very nice. It was well attended and it was nice to be able to participate in something that raises money for for veterans that are continuing their education and have that lag between semesters. Um, I am going to actually reserve some of my comments for um, 14E as I actually read that into the record when we come up on that and explain some of the points within that. So I'm gonna reserve my commentary regarding that until we get to that agenda item. So that will conclude my comments for the commissioner comments portion. So next we're going to move on to number 11, which is the approval of the consent agenda. And on the consent agenda, we have items A, I believe through F. So the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex has reviewed the consent agenda consisting of various proposed resolutions and determined that adoption of the said resolutions is in and will further the public interest. If any commissioner would like to remove an item to be considered separately, please do so now. Hearing no one come forward, I need a motion to adopt the consent agenda A through F. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Pass. Number 12, approval of minutes of the regular meeting, April 14th, 2021, and the executive session minutes, April 14th, 2021. I need a motion to approve the minutes from the regular meeting and executive session. Uh, so moved. Second. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Pass number 13, appointments and or resignation. I'm sorry, Director. Uh, Commissioner Patilla will have to abstain. Thank you. And that I've is noted that for the record. Thank you. I'm sorry. Can we please go back and just state it clearly? Uh, what Commissioner Patillo is abstaining from regular meeting April 14th, 2021 and executive session minutes April 14th, 2021. Sylvia, that you is wish correct. to 
something's going on with our connection here and I apologize. I don't know if it's you or me, but Sylvia, can you please state for the record that you wish to abstain? Yes, I do wish to abstain. Thank you. Thank you. Number 13, appointments and or resignations. We have A and B. I need a motion to adopt the resolutions A and B. So moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh, nope, nope, we cannot do that. We need a roll call vote for this resolution. Yes, we do. Terry, please call the roll. Yes, Commissioner Carney. Yes. Director Fantasia. Yes. Commissioner Fasano. Yes. Commissioner Patillo. Yes. Okay, on to number 14, this is resolutions. Now, what I would like to do is pull resolution 14E to be considered separately. And we have already added resolutions F and G. Director, that yes. I'm sorry, it's Doug Steiner. I apologize for interrupting you, but I do need to ask that you pull F and G and do them separately too. Um, while I, I, I understand and respect and admire what uh, Commissioner Fasano is trying to, and the whole commission board is trying to do um, with taking that um, um, older assets of the county and shifting them down to the Shinbone Valley Volunteer Fire Department, uh, we do have to be mindful of our responsibilities back up here in Sussex County. And I, from going back and forth with with Clerk Poff, um, I'm not sure that we've verified yet that that transfer um, is fully compliant with the statute dealing with the sale or disposition of personal property, which says that the contracting unit need not advertise for bids when it makes any such sale to the United States, the state of New Jersey. Another contracting unit, any body politic to which it contributes raised funds, any foreign nation which has diplomatic relations with the United States or any governmental unit in the United States. I think we just need to verify while I understand it, that the entity down there is tax exempt. We just want to make sure uh, that it is a governmental unit of some form uh, or another uh, so that we don't have to go through an extra step to get this done. So I just think it's important that we dot I's and cross T's. So I think you can vote on those two items separately, subject to, to the clerk or another representative of the county valid, verifying that the, the conveyance would satisfy the statute. Understood. Now, here's my question. Uh, that would be uh, Resolution F involves the I'm fire sorry. department. Yep. Resolution um, G is entirely a separate entity that is not involved. So can we add G to the... Yes, ma'am. I apologize. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So now that would mean that the first thing would be resolutions A, B, C, D. We would be looking at E separately and F separately as well, uh, and G can be added. So we are going to do A through D and G, or the first motion to adopt those resolutions. I'll make so a motion. Moved. And a second. I'll second it. Roll call. Commissioner Carney. Yes. Director Fantasia. Yes. Commissioner Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Okay, next, uh, Mr. Steinhardt, for um, resolution F. Yes, you said we would, may vote on it pending. I would just ask that the, uh, you, you entertain a motion uh, to approve subject to verification of compliance with NJSA 40A colon 11-36. Okay, so I need a motion to adopt resolution F. Yes, ma'am, subject to- Subject to- Yep. The provisions Verif of 40A colon 11-36 and verification thereof. Yes, ma'am. A motion, please. So moved. Second. Second. And second. Oh, uh, we need a roll call for that as well. 
Commissioner Carney? Yes. Commissioner uh, Director Fantasia? Yes. Commissioner Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Okay. Okay, Pat. Next, we are on resolution E. What I am going to do um, during discussions, well, I'll take a motion and a second, and then I will read it into the record and then uh, make my commentary. So I need a motion to adopt resolution E. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. If, he, if Chris went first. Okay, thank you. So, what I would like to do is I would like to read into the record uh, the resolution again with the uh, minor language expansion. Each of you have received this resolution and for the benefit of the public, I'm going to read it. So this is a resolution authorizing the placement of a public question on the official ballot for the general election on November 2nd, 2021 requesting an independent public bipartisan legislative investigation into the governmental policies, regulations, and oversight of New Jersey's long-term care facilities, nursing and veterans homes regarding the deaths from COVID-19 of more than 8,000 residents of said facilities. Whereas the governor of the state of New Jersey has made it his policy to centralize all government authority within the executive branch through the use of executive orders which directly impacts the operations and authority of elected county and local governments. And whereas on March 9th, 2020, the governor of the state of New Jersey issued Executive Order 103, declaring a public health emergency in New Jersey as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. And whereas on March 31st, 2020, a directive from New Jersey Department of Health Commissioner Judith Persichilli informed hospital and nursing home administrators that patients could not be denied admission to post-acute care facilities because of a positive COVID-19 diagnosis. The directive specifically reflects, quote, on March 9th, 2020, Governor Philip D. Murphy issued executive order number 103, declaring a public health emergency in New Jersey as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic. In order to respond to the increase in positive cases, there's an urgent need to expand hospital capacity to be able to meet the demand for patients with COVID-19 requiring acute care. As a result, this directive is being issued to clarify expectations, post-acute care settings, receiving patients and residents, returning from hospitalization and for accepting new admissions. The New Jersey Department of Health directs hospital Excuse me, to mute her phone because we can't hear what you're saying. Sorry, Commissioner. Take a look. Go ahead, Director. Okay. The New Jersey Department of Health directs hospital discharge planning staff and post-acute care facilities to carefully review this guidance with all staff directly involved in patient resident admissions, transfers, and discharges. All post-acute care settings must comply. No patient resident shall be denied readmission or admission to the post-acute care setting solely based on a confirmed diagnosis of COVID-19. Persons under investigation for COVID-19 who have under undergone testing in the hospital shall not be discharged until results are available. Post-acute care facilities are prohibited from requiring a hospitalized patient or resident who is determined medically stable to be tested for COVID-19 prior to admission or readmission. And whereas, as a possible result of this policy by the governor of the state of New Jersey and his agents, to date more than 8,000 residents of the state's long-term care facilities, nursing and veterans homes have died from COVID-19. And whereas long-term care facilities within Sussex County suffered a high rate of death from COVID-19, and whereas long-term care facilities within New Jersey suffered the highest rate of death from COVID-19 in the nation, and whereas attempts to obtain public information have been repeatedly blocked by the administration of Governor Murphy, 
And whereas calls for an independent public bipartisan legislative investigation into the governmental policies, regulations, and oversight of New Jersey's long-term care facilities, nursing and veterans homes, regarding the deaths from COVID-19 of more than 8,000 residents have been ignored. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex as follows. The Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex hereby request the Sussex County Clerk to print on the official ballot to be used in the general election to be held on November 2nd, 2021, the following public question on which the qualified voters of the County of Sussex, State of New Jersey, will have the opportunity to express their opinion and to instruct their government with regard to the policy of the governor of the state of New Jersey above. Two, the question will reflect on behalf of those who died of COVID-19 while residents of long-term care facilities within Sussex County and their families, as well as the Sussex County family members of residents of long-term care facilities situated elsewhere in New Jersey. The voters of Sussex County, state of New Jersey, direct the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex to consider every legal action necessary to compel the governor of the state of New Jersey and the leadership of the New Jersey legislature to release all public information requested by Sussex County on behalf of and by its citizens. And in the furtherance of full transparency, conduct an independent bipartisan legislative investigation into the governmental policies, regulations, and oversight of New Jersey's long-term care facilities, nursing and veterans homes regarding the deaths from COVID-19 of more than 8,000 residents. Yes or no? Number three, the clerk of the County of Sussex is further requested to print on said ballot the following interpretive statement of the public question presented above. The public question directs the board of county commissioners to consider every legal action necessary to compel the governor and the legislature to release all public information requested by Sussex County on behalf of and by its citizens and in the furtherance of full transparency conduct an independent public bipartisan legislative investigation into the governmental policies, regulations, and oversight of the state's long-term care facilities, nursing and veterans homes regarding the deaths from COVID-19 of more than 8,000 residents. Number four, in the event any section, part, or provision of this resolution shall be held unconstitutional or invalid by any court, such holding shall not affect the validity of this resolution or of any remaining part of this resolution. Number five, the result of the public question will be tabulated and maintained by the Office of the County Clerk. A copy of those results will be forwarded to the Governor and Secretary of State, State of New Jersey. Number six, the County Clerk will provide notice of this resolution and the public question for the general election of 2021. Number seven, the resolution shall take effect upon its final passage and publication as required by law. Be it further resolved that a certified copy of this resolution be forwarded to the Sussex County Clerk Sussex County federal legislators, members of the New Jersey Senate and New Jersey General Assembly, commissioner boards in each county in the state of New Jersey, and the mayors and clerk and administrators of all of the county municipalities. So that is the full text of the resolution that we are voting on this evening or considering this evening. So uh, just to address some of the comments uh, that came in this evening, I did, I did make some notes. Um, I do want to point out to begin with that this resolution, you know, again, I agree with the one caller that said, you know, on the surface, who would not want uh, transparency? Um, and there, there is an investigation that has been launched and is being conducted by the attorney general. Um, the attorney general is not necessarily investigating the state culpability. Again, the state is who is charged with the oversight of these private nursing homes, not counties, the state. So I know that there are many uh, investigations that are going on in multiple facilities linked to that. Again, whether it is an improper individual that would be conducting that investigation at the state level. Um, I'm not speaking about any individual in particular. I'm talking about the appearance of a, a conflict here. The attorney general is a direct appointee 
of the governor. That position is directly appointed by the governor. So it is obvious to say that if that is the individual that is charged with conducting an investigation of the individual who appoints them to that position, that may reflect the appearance of a conflict. Um, so what the amendments made to this resolution are actually quite actionable. We've heard before, oh, this may be outside of the purview of the county. Well, I can tell you what is not outside the purview of the county. And that is the fact that we have submitted multiple OPRA requests beginning last year, last May. The last communication we received from the state was to ask us again for another extension. Uh, and that was communication we received in August. And now here we sit practically the eve of the following May, so almost a full year from our initial request. And I firmly believe that the state is hiding behind the pandemic and it is not just Sussex County that cannot get information. The mainstream media, all major media outlets have written scathing, scathing articles about how the state of New Jersey clearly lacks transparency in releasing documents. So our point being, there must be an investigation into why the state would issue such a directive when there are recordings of when that was issued within 24 hours, 99 long-term care facilities in the state of New Jersey informed the New Jersey Department of Health they could not adequately separate. Within one week, 200 facilities contacted the Department of Health, the New Jersey Department of Health, and said they could not maintain separation. When I reflect back on Sussex County's response, we have documented, well-documented, over 120 contacts back and forth between the Sussex County Division of Health and the State of New Jersey Department of Health. Our requests, our reports, met zero action until the unthinkable happened in Andover and the story broke in the New York Times. And boy, did things change at that point. All of a sudden we had incredible amounts of PPE flooding in to be able to deliver there because Andover Subacute was on the news, if you recall. There seems to be a trend here with media pressure. Now I would also like to refer to President Trump's response he authorized the New Jersey National Guard at uh, the end of March. We knew that that facility, specifically Andover, was incredibly short-staffed. We reported it multitude of times, as did District 24 reported this a multitude of times. They needed additional staff. They needed PPE. PPE was delivered. What happened at the point it was delivered? We still don't know. And again, Sussex County does not have the authority to go in and, and investigate that specific private facility. However, we do have reports of individuals saying there was not adequate PPE even after we tracked thousands of pieces of PPE directly delivered to that facility. What we do know is it took from March when the president at the time authorized the use of the New Jersey National Guard to May when Governor Murphy, when we asked formally, can we please have help from the National Guard to get this facility under control? And it took that long for that help to come up to Sussex County. It took until August to get a penny of direct CARES funding. New Jersey sat on our money from the federal government for six months with 90% reported unspent by the governor for six months into the pandemic and not sent to help relieve communities. So when you ask, is this partisan? It should not be partisan. It's good governance versus bad governance. In any way you slice it, this is bad governance. We cannot get reports from the state. 
they refuse to release information to our county that fall under the Open Public Records Act. This resolution, we are within our right to say or move forward to be able to obtain these documents. So that's part of this resolution because if the state of New Jersey does not respond to a bipartisan request for a, a bipartisan, rather a bipartisan investigation and they do not comply, we will take our documents that I am fully confident that we will be able to take legal action to obtain from the state of New Jersey so we can determine exactly what happened so it will never happen there again. So I fully support this resolution and I would ask that my colleagues on this board do the same. Does any other commissioner have any comment on this prior to us taking the vote? I need a I'm sorry, would you like me to call the roll? Please. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Carney? Yes. Director Fantasia? Yes. Commissioner Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Pass. Number 15, awards of contract change orders and bid, A and B. The Board of County Commissioners of the County of Sussex has reviewed the award of contract change orders bids consisting of various proposed resolutions and determined that adoption of said resolutions is in and will further the public interest. I need a motion to adopt resolutions A and B. So moved. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Carney. Yes. Director Fantasia? Yes. Commissioner Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Number 16, financial. Resolution, payment of bills list, April 28th, 2021. I need a motion to adopt the bills list. So moved. And a second? And second. Roll call. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Director Fantasia? Yes. Commissioner Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Bertillo? Yes. Number 17, personnel. Resolution authorizing the personnel agenda of April 28th, 2021. I need a motion to adopt the personnel agenda. So moved. Second? Second. Second. Roll call. Commissioner Carney? Yes. Director Fantasia? Yes. Commissioner Fasano? Yes. Commissioner Patillo? Yes. Commissioner Yardley? He's absent. Oh, I'm sorry. I just, <laughs> I, I, someone just got caught in my camera. I, I thought I was alone. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, number 18, administrative report, Mr. Poff. Yes, thank you, Director. Um, I just wanted to give a quick update. Uh, we've made improvements to our scheduling and registration system uh, for vaccination individuals that are now seeking uh, a vaccination appointment at the county pod, which is located at the fairgrounds in Augusta, have the ability to go online and make appointments for themselves. If the appointments fill up, they have the ability to enter their demographic information into the wait list and then will be scheduled an appointment when uh, appointments become available. Uh, as of this afternoon, uh, we still had a number of appointments uh, available for tomorrow and uh, Saturday. Uh, as a result of the way the calendar works, uh, those will be the last first dose clinics that we will have until the middle of May. Uh, so those members of the public looking to get vaccinated have the ability to go online right now and make appointments as we still have some appointments 
uh, open. Uh, and I, I apologize. I said uh, tomorrow. It's uh, tomorrow, Thursday, the uh, 29th, and Friday, the 30th. Um, we have been through all 21,660 registrants that had signed up for the county's pre-registration site. Uh, as I've said, the, we've been through that list twice, offering everybody the chance uh, to be vaccinated. Uh, we are seeing a number of people uh, asking to be removed or declining uh, in as much as we believe that they've been able to secure vaccinations elsewhere, uh, but continue to administer a vaccine uh, at the county pod in Augusta. And that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a county council report. I do know we have substitute council tonight in lieu of Kevin, as, a, as was at the last meeting. Um, Mr. Steinhardt, do you have anything to add this evening? Other than to thank the commissioners for the opportunity to join you this evening. Thank you. Uh, number 20, unfinished business. Does any commissioner have unfinished business to bring to the table? Hearing nothing, new business, number 21. Any new business the commissioner wishes to bring to the table? Okay, moving on to number 22. This is public session from the floor. This public session is for general questions or comments. Before we open this session, we ask callers wanting to make a comment to first state your name and municipality. The clerk will create a roster and call each in the order received. Comments are limited to three minutes or less. So again, unmute yourself and you will say your name, your municipality, and the clerk will take the roll in the order that you, you give your name. So I need a motion to open the floor for public comment. So move. And a second. A second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the floor is open to collect the roster for public comment. Joseph Lavabera, Stillwater. Alex Majewski Newton. Uh, uh, gentlemen, I'm sorry. I, I, gentlemen, please let me first acknowledge your name. So I have to manually write this down. So Joseph Lavabera from what what town? Stillwater. Just Stillwater. Okay. Then the second gentleman is Alex Majewski from Newton. Alex Majewski from Newton. Third caller. It's Kenneth Collins from Andover Township. Kenneth Collins, Andover Township, yes. Steve Salvaggio, Hopacon. Steve Salvaggio, Hopacon, all righty. Christy Laven, Hardison. Christy Laven, Hardison, yes. The light flashed in here. Hi, Michelle Van Allen Hardison. Michelle Van Allen Hardison. All righty. Brianna Paternoster Newton. Brianna Newton. Okay. Mike Drabel, Sparta. Mike Drabel, Sparta. All right. Hearing no one else come forward, Terry, I would ask that you call in Can order. I, oh. I'm, I'm sorry, Jim Baldini uh, saying this to I sorry, apologize for that connection. Thank you. Tim Baldini, what was that? Sanderson. Hardison? Sanderson. Oh, Sanderson. Sanderson. Okay. I have that, thank you. Okay. All right, Joseph, first caller was Joseph LaBarrera from Stillwater. Yes, thank you. Uh, fantastic work, commissioners. This county commission, historically known as freeholders, has demonstrated to the nation what the value of good small government is. You're contending with the state with the highest elderly death rate in these facilities in the entire nation. 
And this is a state with one of the highest GDPs, one of the wealthiest states in the country that allows this to happen and ignores the efforts of this county to prevent this horror show from happening, that we could see it is a state where in our elderly facilities, our elderly are just left to die. And that's all over the news. It's all over the media. There is no denying this happened. This is fact. This is fact. Responsibility, represent, responsibility rests with the state. And in this state government is clearly comfortable with basically having a death facility, not an elderly care facility in these environments. This commission contends with the state that has a government that like governments in sectarian conflicts, punishes their opposition with taxation, puts excess financial burdens as exemplified by the commissioners speaking about uh, these so-called, uh, I don't know if they call them reforms or ideas or whatever they're gonna do to further complicate and breed distrust with our electoral system. And now this, kind of this financial burden is placed on the counties that don't really want it. And then this state government withholds common resources from those who oppose their agenda as we saw with our power outage and the lack of government support in that uh, a year and a half ago. A state government that puts petty social issues, creates hyperbole as political policy and divides with the comply or die mentality literally in its approach to its people. We have a state government like in a sectarian conflict seen in places like Northern Ireland, the Balkans, sometimes Iraq, isolates and discards their opposition from discourse. In our, in our, in our instance, denies information that was Oprah requested that was the people's right and blocks the people from learning about what truly happened. This county commission is a mighty example of our republic, fighting the good fight, taking care of those with disadvantages, uh, about people with no access to the internet, the elderly, et cetera. This commission is about all the time, every time we hear them talking. It's only a matter of time before the corrupt fall. No corrupt regime, no tyrannical regime, and no incompetent regime ever survives long. It is merely a symptom in the cycle of history of, of living in a golden age where people get soft and complacent and allow these corrupt regimes to exist. But the tide is turning and this commission is leading the way. God bless you all. Thank you. All right, then we have our next caller, Alex Nuchewski from Newton. Hello, I'd like to reflect on a few items that were discussed earlier in the meeting during the first public portion. The last time that I checked, Frank Pallotta or Donald Trump were not on this commissioner board. However, they seem to be a subject of some individuals who decided to direct their comments to Pallotta and Trump. Now, during the pandemic, it was President Trump who set up the Javits Center and authorized the USNS Comfort hospital ship to aid New York and New Jersey residents. It was Phil Murphy who refused to accept the help from President Trump. You want to talk about a game of partisan politics? Look right at Phil Murphy, if not Donald Trump to blame. Moving on. The First Amendment allows us to express our views freely. We are allowed to disagree or not like what someone says. However, I'd like to encourage those who wish to speak to do so respectfully, and if you happen to disagree, come prepared with facts. Moving on again, another item which impacts county business. Let's enter into a brief discussion about how some Democrat state committee reps and some Democrat council members actively support individuals of their inner circle who publicly support anarchy, government overthrow, and call for violence against elected officials. I'm curious what Congressman Josh Gottheimer and the members of his Problem Solvers Caucus think of this. What would they think of the comments made? What would the congressman himself think about some members of his own party making anti-Semitic remarks with elected Democrats supporting the individual making those remarks? Perhaps we should ask the Problem Solvers Caucus why the Sussex Democrats have not denounced this type of vile and reckless behavior. The Democrats need only look at their name and live up to it. Democracy and the transparency that democracy is supposed to be synonymous with. Supposed to be, but in practice, really not so much. Thank you, everyone, for your time and good night. Thank you. Our next caller is Mr. Ken Collins from Andover Township. And good evening. <clears throat> um, thank you for the opportunity to <clears throat> speak to you this evening. Um, I'm sorry, is someone else speaking? No, sir. You're good. I just, I just no. someone. I think it was just shuffling papers. Mr. Collins, you can proceed. You're on mute, Mr. Collins. I'm sorry, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. 
All right. Thank yes, you. Yes, I, um, I, I stopped your time just so you know, Mr. Collins. So we'll resume your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Um, I, I've heard a great deal of rhetoric from the commission and uh, and from Commissioner Fantasia specifically um, about wants versus needs and carefully measuring those. And, and there are some areas where I can see that um, carefully measuring those really needs to be a focus of the commission. Um, and and I, as I've pointed out, um, this evening and at previous commissioner meetings, um, Sussex County Community College is, is an area of focus there. And, and there's a great deal of taxpayer money being thrown back, good money being thrown after bad there. Um, we don't need more empty buildings. We don't, that we have to power and light and heat and clean and maintain. We don't, we, we so, so spending money on those sorts of things should really be under the microscope going forward, um, especially uh, as those, um, as the, the attendance dwindles at the college. Um, wants versus needs. Um, maybe if the commissioners want the Murphy administration to cooperate with them, they need to stop their relentless aggression against the governor that might be something you might want to think about. Um, wants versus needs. You want to attack the governor, but we need cooperation from Trenton, not, not, not commissioners that just go on relentless, endless political attacks. Um, wants versus needs. One minute. Uh, something that you really, really, really need to focus on as a commission going forward and not just uh, not just um, use as rhetoric, because um, I, 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 you can cut our taxes. Um, if you want to cut our taxes, cooperate with Trenton, with uh, the, the school reorganization, and, and get rid of all the unnecessary school districts so that we can have lower property taxes. But you don't want to do that because you'll have to give up control of the money. And it's really that's all about. That's all it's about is money and controlling money and issuing being, being able to issue bonds for the county college and, and bonds for this and bonds for that. And that, you know, it's, it's all about the money. It's, it's not about what we need. It's about what you want. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our next caller is Steve Savaggio from Hopacon. Hi, good evening, everyone. Tonight, I wanted to speak on the terrible leadership in New Jersey, and most notably in District 11, run by Congresswoman Mikey Sherrill. When Mikey Sherrill first ran, came into office, she promised she was going to be a moderate Democrat and was going to serve both Democrats and Republicans equally. But since then, that has proven to be lies as she votes with Nancy Pelosi 99% of the time. Examples are she voted to allow criminals to sue police officers for doing their job. She voted for the failed impeachment trial of Donald Trump. She voted for stricter gun laws, higher taxes, she supports AOC, Nancy Pelosi, and other radical leftists who support and advocate for policies like the Green New Deal and medical, Medicare for All. Another troubling aspect of Com Congresswoman Sherrill's ter terrible, terrible leadership in Sussex County, got by we got bypassed for the first wave of funding for COVID relief, but Bergen County got $8.3 million, while four other counties got omitted, Sussex County unfortunately being one of the four. One question I do have for Congresswoman Cheryl and Congress, Congressman Gottenheimer is why did they accept $2.4 million each from Mike Bloomberg, giving him their full endorsement drops out two weeks later of the presidential race and then immediately pander to the Biden administration. Congresswoman Cheryl has continued to bring up the January 6th Capitol riots, but has not condemned Black Lives Matter or Antifa, not once. The same radical groups that have just destroyed over $2 billion across the country. I, I even called her office twice, never got a call back, and the secretary seemed uninterested, which I'm not surprised. All in all, I don't think Congresswoman Cheryl seems too interested in serving those in District 11, but just, just a front for pictures and passing radical agenda through Congress. I also wanted to point out to the uh, caller earlier with 14E agenda items, also questioning why Frank Pilata was there. Maybe if you paid attention, instead of talking about Trump all the time, you would know Frank is a congressional candidate. Hey, listen, not let's supposed to address other callers. Not supposed to address other callers. We're, we're going to 
we're going to do this right or we're not going to do it at all. Uh, you can address your comments to the commission. That's an appropriate subject to what we're doing. Or we're not doing it back and forth to each other. We're not here to argue with one another. Uh, while we may or may not agree with each other's opinions, you can do it respectfully and with a, with a sense of decorum and respect each other's views. So you got a comment to make, make a comment that's related to something that's going on in the meeting, but don't be directing it to somebody else that's involved. May okay. I also add something, um, Mr. Steinhardt, uh, repeatedly again, we have legal counsel here to intervene. But we have the same female member of the public that continues to jump in and attempt to mediate and you're an inch away from also being asked to maybe remove yourself. So that's the final warning. I apologize. I'm, I'm done. So please, I, have, I just so that you know, for the record, I stopped your time. So let's resume. I, I, I finished anyway. Um, that's it for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Sarr. Our next caller was uh, Christy Lavin from Hardiston. Hi, can you hear me? I'm on my phone now because there's a storm. I'm not sure if you can hear me. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we okay. can hear you. Okay, thank you. Um, something that strikes me um, is that with all the comments made tonight, one particular caller, and I'm not gonna say their name or anything like that, um, they shared a personal and moving information about working in long-term care facilities. And, and I know that I was moved and it just seems that the board kind of glazes over it. And I, I realize you can't comment afterwards, um, but I too, you know, shared that I, I watched my uncle die and I don't expect your sympathy. I don't expect your respect, but if constituents are sharing the specifics, perhaps you can acknowledge their suffering it not only helps them, but it also helps those of us that are bearing witness to what they shared. Tonight, we're talking about Andover Subacute. And I know that there's a lot of callers that are sharing their political um, views, they're sharing their opinions. But if there's callers like that caller that I just referenced, she shared very specific information about her own personal um, experience. And I think it was important to note and important to acknowledge. What that caller shared was a great example of why we need stakeholders, as Commissioner Patillo called them, in terms of the long-term care quality and safety task force, making recommendations instead of politicians. And that speaks to uh, Director Fantasia's concern about objectivity. I also wanted to add, I do think that there are a lot of things that commissioners can do to help Andover residents and family members locally. Since the vigil for Andover that took place a couple weeks ago, a group formed on social media page and there's already one that formed when the tragedy first occurred. There's a way to reach out to those that have been affected if you feel so inclined. There are people right now that have family members in Andover that have concerns, educating them, about, prot educating them about protocols and voicing grievances to the state, helping them to know about patient rights, Yes, you can always post it on the county website, but there's more proactive ways about reaching out to family members. Another thought is creating an Andover task force of your own, showing in good faith that this isn't political and you're simply looking to support family members and provide information. Educate the public is something that I'm sure is very important to you and falls under public health. Because what I can tell you is the more informed every resident and family member is, the less likely they will be taken advantage of. And that would be incredibly valuable and that would be meaningful to family members and residents alike. I know there are no easy answers and I don't pretend to have them. And that's why I've been calling legislators to see what they're doing to make things better. If each person that has influence seeks to use it for the good within their capacity, my hope Just is- Just laughing up, sorry, your time is up. Lavin, your time is up. I need to move on to the next caller, who is Michelle Van Allen from Hardiston. Okay. Thank you. Um, yes, I am the, the female caller in question. I believe your attorney is being paid by the county to represent uh, the, the callers as well as the commission. And when someone is speaking rhetoric that you are not allowing on the calls, it should be intercepted immediately, not allowed to go on and on when a, uh, a someone from the public has to bring it to your attention. So I'm glad that I did and I appreciate you stopping them eventually. 
I am looking forward to, uh, um, in November, there being more balance uh, politically, especially on the uh, commissioner board when our candidates do get elected, because it seems there is no balance at this point. I am against the resolution that you have proposed. I understand that you feel you have to point the finger at someone. And um, with this privately owned subacute center that seemed to be not doing the right thing in the beginning. And when the virus hit the tri-state area, especially New Jersey, as hard as it did in the very beginning, when everyone was trying to figure out what exactly was going on, even though our, our president, our government at the time, President 45, did not even uh, intervene to try and stop it. I, 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 the rhetoric and the deflection you've thrown at, at, people have thrown out tonight is ridiculous. 575,000 people are dead. Most of those were on 45 watches. I denounce your resolution. And it's unfortunate that you're, you were uh, on top of this resolution when we asked you uh, for, for months to try and bring forth a resolution um, to denounce hate in our county, yet um, you're, you're jumping on something like this that you think is, uh, is uh, unfair. I think it's unfair that anybody had to die. I think nobody should have had to die. It should have been mitigated and handled in the very beginning, but it was not because President 45 called it a hoax. And again, point the finger wherever you want. He is to blame. And everybody in this country knows it. And I hope somewhere he has to atone for his crimes. So uh, thank you. One minute. Thank you. Van Allen, it's Doug Stein. Our next caller was uh, Brianna Paternostra. Paternostra. I'm sorry. Ms. Lyons, one second. Paternostra. I just want to respond to Ms. Van Allen just uh, from, as, as a legal matter. So I, I appreciate you pointing out my my uh, speed or lack thereof. But, you know, I, I take the role pretty seriously as well as your folks right to to make your, your comment uh, within the purview of of the Open Public Meetings Act, which allows you folks to comment on any governmental issue that, that a member feels may be of concern to the residents of Sussex County. And while that doesn't mean that we're allowed to, to regulate a person's content, it does mean that we can regulate their conduct. And the, the Third Circuit Court of Appeals uh, has been very clear on kind of what that means. That means you can't badger people or, you know, engage in constant interruptions, you know, like trying to stop people in the middle of their comments uh, or disregard rules of this or decorum. So, you know, I intervene when I can, being mindful of the fact that I don't want to cut somebody off in the middle of a thought if it's them simply expressing their interest. So I hear what you're trying to say, um, but we're going to, and we'll do our best to make sure that these re-meetings run smoothly, balancing people's First Amendment rights with the commissioner's ability to have a, a professional meeting. Well, I appreciate you coming on and saying that, but the first woman that spoke went on and on about the China virus. She was five or six sentences in before I said something, and then she was stopped. And then the other caller that was speaking Man, about- I got any it. Comments that I, you got it? I, got I hope it. you got it. Yep, thanks. I'm sorry, Ms. Lyons. I know you were with Ms. That's okay. Uh, Oscar, and I apologize, uh, Brianna, for interrupting you. Brianna, are you there? I'm still here, I'm still here. Um, I, um, again, as a CNA, as I worked through COVID, as I worked through the thick of COVID, um, we were completely unable to protect our patients because of, I'm gonna start crying because I have seen enough death this year. Um, we were unable to protect our patients because of um, the executive orders placed on us and the, the qualifiers placed on us. Our population of people is so vulnerable. They have so many, um, they, they have so many underlying conditions and, and it's everything. It's not like it's an ICU unit with, you know, or, or a med surge unit with just one thing. Some have diabetes, some have, they have a whole bunch of things. They are elderly. They are not eating well. They are not well hydrated. And now you stick a COVID positive patient in with them. And we know that this virus spreads like wildfire. When COVID first hit our floors, we had no PPE. We had nothing. We were working maskless. We did have gloves. In some, in some facilities I was in, we did not have disposable wipes. We were using towels. So our laundry people, um, the, the uh, 
were getting sick because they were constantly dealing with feces laden laundry. We had kitchen staff quit. We were completely unable to protect our people. They were in 10 by 10 rooms. We have a six foot social distancing rule. They were in 10 by 10 rooms coughing on each other. It went through the floors like wildfire. These COVID positive patients should have never been placed in these facilities with these people. One minute. They had no available way to protect themselves and we had no available way to protect them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Our next caller is um, Mike Drabel from Sparta. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Mike. Go ahead. Oh, thank, thanks again for uh, giving me the time to speak. Um, I, uh, I want to comment on the uh, also the end over subacute issue. I know the resolution has already been passed. Uh, I also um, agree with the fact that we need to spread light anytime there's a tragedy that could have been mitigated. I don't think it could have been prevented completely. COVID has swept the entire world. We can all agree to that. So uh, as many investigations as uh, efficiently possible, I, I do applaud. And I do also have a problem with state government. However, uh, I think it's the flip side of the coin from what the commissioners are proposing or have proposed. My problem is that, first of all, my wife has been a nurse for over 35 years, and I have followed the uh, movement of the proper nurse patient ratio um, uh, issue for quite a number of years. Uh, most states do not have it in place for hospitals. The, uh, the only law for hospitals was passed in 1981 and IC units, ICU units only nurse to three patients. However, even that mandate is uh, typically violated by hospital corporations who spend millions of dollars lobbying uh, Congress and state government uh, to prevent any further action on this issue. So uh, I don't think I heard it mentioned tonight. I've been off and on listening. Um, but in uh, September, in direct response to the Andover subacute tragedy on September 24th last year, the New Jersey Nursing Home Act S2712, nomenclature in the Senate. Our state representative county, Assemblymen Space, Worth, and Senator Rojo voted no. Every Republican in the state government, and our New Jersey state okay. government, voted no except for one, one cent. Every Democrat had voted yes. This, uh, this law says that uh, nursing homes now, this is only applying to nursing homes, but obviously applies to long-term uh, facilities like this and over subacute. One nurse for eight patients per day shift, one nurse for 10 patients at night. Many, many, many copious uh, 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 efforts at research have shown that nurse staffing is the number one problem as far as uh, the spread of infection. Nurse staffing saves lives. Nurse, you can talk to any nurse, not just, you know, I, I hear my wife every day after she comes home. Um, nurse staffing is an important issue and we have to keep striving for, for hospital regulation. But that is the height of hypocrisy to complain about your state government not acting, not predicting the future, not providing enough PPE. These nursing homes are habitually not uh, understaffed. Drabel, I'm sorry, your time is up, Mr. Drabel. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Our final caller this evening is uh, Mr. Jim Baldini from Sar uh, Sanderson. Thank you, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Mr. Baldini. Excellent, listen, I just wanted to say two things. First off, uh, it's a great job that you are able to um, put this on the ballot. I think that's completely necessary. Uh, we, we need to get some transparency. And you know, the second thing is anybody who thinks that this is a partisan issue is, I think, in fact, acting in a partisan way when we're trying to save or trying to find out uh, what happened with an issue. I think it's a key point to uh, have transparency. And there clearly isn't transparency in this matter. And uh, that's all I have to say. So once again, thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Baldini. That concludes our callers that I have a record of. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, I have just two very, very brief comments after that. Uh, one- Why don't you, uh, you want to move to close the public comment first, Commissioner? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. I need a motion to close the floor to the public. So move. Second. Second. A second. A second. 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 All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, floor is closed to the public. Uh, again, two very brief comments. One, um, our long-term care facilities clearly were not set up to be critical care units. Um, COVID absolutely ravaged the elderly, required uh, significant medical intervention. And, uh, you know, those employees, I would never expect them, and I'm not in any way a medical professional, but I would think that they don't have the training um, that, that these nursing homes did not have the staffing to provide that level of critical care. I mean, it's clearly evidenced in 200 facilities saying to the state, we simply can't do this. So I think that was, that was obvious. And uh, one of the other callers had mentioned something about the governor um, and, and that perhaps if the county government was more agreeable, friendly, amenable uh, to the governor and stopped being critical, maybe we would get services and whatnot. And see, that's where I disagree because I may think the governor's a lot of things, but I don't agree that I think that he would punish and, and do harm to 140,000 residents who have a, a leadership that happens to disagree with him because we are in much worse shape than I ever anticipated if we're to assume that Sussex County is somehow being punished of critical life-saving services. So if that's what you're alluding to, that is where I have to draw the line. And that's all I have. So moving on to number 23, reminders, please check the county's website at www.suffolk.nj.us for meeting schedules. Uh, number 24, I do not believe we have executive session this evening. That is correct. Okay. So again, direct you to the county website. Uh, vaccination appointments are open. We have those health clinics. Please don't forget on Wheatsworth for regular immunizations, especially that child clinic for uh, children uh, birth through five who do not have health insurance. So please, please spread the word for that and make sure that that word gets out in the community and we will do that as well from our end. Thank you for participating. Uh, be safe and we will see you at the next meeting. Thank you. I need a motion to adjourn. So move. So move. Second. 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 All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.